Hello, hello, everybody. We are continuing. I said that weird. Continuing and potentially finishing Ace Attorney Justice for All. Of course, that still means that there's, I think, trials and tribulations after this. But since we've just, like, plowed through, like, 20 streams of Ace Attorney by now, I figured that once we complete this, hopefully in this stream, that I will take a small break. Maybe, <laughs> probably we'll finish Pokemon Blue Rescue Team, and I'll then maybe start a different, like, series. Like, I don't know, Breath of the Wild. I've been seeing clips of Tears of the Kingdom, and my brain is just going, Hey! Hey! I want to play yet! And, but I also want to beat Breath of the Wild first, because I've had it since launch, but I haven't beaten it. But at the same time, I put tens of hours into it. Eh. But yeah, so maybe look forward to that. But either way, we're going to see if we can finish this off. Last time, we fully discovered that the boy, Matt on guard, is a bastard man and is actually the most evil mastermind of this whole crime. And right now, we're trying to waste as much time so that we don't have to give him an acquittal, but, like, Gumshoe and uh, Edgeworth's police force can find the killer and save Maya. So, hiddly D. <laughs> oh, I knew it was a good idea to hold her hostage. Don't you agree, Mr. Lawyer? But I never thought in your desperation you tried to pin the guilt onto Adrian. Ah! I swear this demon will pay! Mr. Nick! Pearls? Where's Mia? I don't know. A really strong power suddenly called her away. It must be Maya. Well, at the same time, I forget. Who's stronger, Pearl or Maya? Probably Maya from her overall, like, training. But Pearl probably has more natural talent, if I've read everything correctly. A really strong power? More Steel Samurai theme music. Why does he keep that as his ringtone, I wonder? Oh, Mr. Nick, your phone is... It's from Gumshoe. How's it going? Have you been hanging in there, pal? Yeah, sort of. We just barely found something to latch on to. Whew, that's good, pal. And what about you? Anything yet? Have you figured out where the killer and Maya are? Um, uh, we still don't have any leads, but... What? We don't have any more time! If we just had one, even a single clue would be really helpful! I was only able to come this far because I kept thinking to myself, I've got to keep the trial going until Maya's been rescued. I have just run out of luck this time. Is all her hope for naught? A tent! Huh? A tent? I could see a circus tent. M Mia! It looks like Maya was unconscious until just a few minutes ago. As soon as she woke up, she called for me. So it was Maya that called you away. She's locked in a dusty little room right now but I could see a circus tent outside the window about 300 feet away. You don't mean... Big Berry Circus? Well, I mean... That's one way to tie the filler arc, well, the filler case into the main one, I guess. Gumshoe, is there a circus in town right now? There's only one, pal! The very big circus! Haha! <laughs> I called it! That's neat. I like that they're tying that in. Maya is somewhere within a 300-foot radius of the main tent. Wh what? Okay, hold on a sec, pal! Hey! Draw a circle on the map! About a 300-foot radius from the main tent! Hurry! And... And? I could see a mailbox under the window just outside. Gumshoe, there's also a mailbox. Hmm, okay. What else? What else, Mia? I'm sorry, but it was a very small window. I couldn't see anything else. It felt like I was in an old office building. Maybe the third floor or so. I heard her! An old office building? Good stuff, pal! Okay, just hang in there. Just a little longer, pal. Wish us luck! Good luck. I'll call you later. 
So don't let your battery die, okay, pal? Mia, Maya's not hurt, right? She's in a pretty bad state, Phoenix. She's being starved. Granted, it's been... Three days? Since the, like, Grand Prix award show, so... Yeah, I guess she'd be getting to a, a bit of a starvation area, yeah. Come, Shu. Please hurry! Looks like we're out of time. Are you alright, Phoenix? It's only a matter of time before Maya's rescued. I can't do this. I, I, oh, I can do this. Brain put the T in there for some reason. I can do this. I just have to make this trial last a little longer. I wonder what Unguard is thinking. If he sees all that, or if he's, like, shuffled away. But okay, we're making progress. Court will now reconvene. The killer, the man who murdered the victim, handed this to his client. From this, one obvious question arises. Why this particular item? I believe the answer to that question will provide us with the name of the real culprit. Now then, the prosecution calls the defendant's manager, Adrian Andrews, to the stand. She's probably like, why am I here again? Currently, the witness is accused of tampering and obstruction of justice. However, you have been called to the witness stand today to ascertain who exactly is guilty of murder. I understand. Very good. Now, have you ever seen this bear before, Miss Andrews? Of course I have. You have seen it before? That's right. It's only natural that the witness has. Miss Andrews, could you please enlighten the court to this bear's secrets? All right. Why... Why does she... <laughs> Phoenix is just like, wait, this isn't supposed to happen. She's supposed to be, like, completely innocent. Actually, this is an elaborate puzzle. If you know the correct order, it can be taken apart one piece at a time. At its center is a small cavity with just enough room to store a small item. Because of its complexity, if you don't know the order, you can't open the bear. You really can't tell it's a small jewelry box just by looking at it. Huh. So it's a little box. So this figurine, it's a container of sorts, is it? Yes, looks can be deceiving, wouldn't you agree? Yes, this is a superb craftsmanship. Oh, yes, I nearly forgot. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. It looks like there really was something to that bear after all. I mean, yeah, there was a reason why it had to be taken. But the real question is, what is in it? I can... Considering that there's only really one major item that would want... Be want to be hidden by Corrida... And, hmm, the real question is, how would the killer slash on guard know of its importance? That's the real question. Well, let's press. A puzzle? That's right. Hmm, but it looks like an ordinary figurine. True enough. To people who don't know, I'm sure they would never guess that this was a puzzle. So what kind of puzzle is this exactly? If you know the correct order, it can be taken apart one piece at a time. We'll just press everything. I don't think there's a contradiction here. So you, so, you can take it apart. And how would one go about doing that? Well, you first turn its tail to the right, and then push it in. Oh, yes, I see. After that, the arms and legs are free to move and can be removed. Ooh, this is most interesting. A oh, boy in his new toy. It's like he's five all over again. <laughs> he really is just playing with it. That's adorable. Oh, don't mind me. Go ahead and carry on. I do love that they're, like, showing him playing with it by moving around the box. I like that. I think he's lost it. So what do you find after you take the puzzle apart? At its center is a small cavity with just enough room to store a small item. And how do you know about this? I know because I was the one who bought it. Huh? It was a souvenir from when a friend and I went to Switzerland. Then this... this was a present from you? That's right. It was a puzzle in the shape of a bear, so I bought it 
so I thought it would be perfect for Juan. So it was a present from Miss Andrews. Witness, let's continue with your testimony. Because of its complexity, if you don't know the order, you can't open the bear. So who exactly knew how to solve this puzzle? Only the two of us, Juan and myself. It was a souvenir from Switzerland, so I doubt there are that many people with this same bear in this country. But this looks like it can be easily broken, especially if someone wanted to get at what's inside. Well, it's a toy, but it can never be the same again once it's been broken. So obviously nobody has broken it because it's obviously not broken. Who else knows that this bear is actually a small container or jewelry box? I never told anyone, and as long as Juan never told anyone either, then only the two of us knew. The two of you, huh? Then of course that means Mr. On Guard didn't know, right? I think this is about all I'm going to get for now. Figurine updated. Well, Mr. Wright, I think even you have come to realize that there is one very important fact we have uncovered, and that is this. This bear is actually a jewelry box. Hmm. Now that we have agreed to this point, there is only one logical question that can come next, and that is this. What is inside this box? What's inside? That's right. And that's what we are going to find out next. Witness? Yes? You are the only one who can open this. Please. Do so. Ooh, this is a... this is a new. Silence. There is a painful silence hanging over the courtroom. All eyes are on Miss Andrews now that... now as she solves the puzzle and takes the bear apart. Click. I've opened it. Is this what you wanted? But what is that? It looks like a note. I don't think we need to guess at what this is, do we, Mr. Wright? It's the suicide note. The suicide note? The suicide note left by one Corridor's former manager, Celeste Impax. Until now, no one knew of its whereabouts, but just as we suspected, it was hidden. Hidden by the victim, Juan Corrida himself. It seems Celeste Impax had very beautiful handwriting. And she just as beautifully signed her own name on this document. This is most definitely the note she left right before she committed suicide. Well, what does it say? Uh, order! Witness! Did you know about this? Yes, I did. I heard all about it from Juan. When I discovered his body, I looked for the bear. I wanted to destroy the note before it became public, but I couldn't find it anywhere, because it had already been taken by the killer. Everything is going at Mr. Edgeworth's pace, so now that the suicide note has been found, what's the next logical question? What is written on the note? That's right. At least, that's what I would think. Now then! I believe it is only appropriate the contents of this note be made known. I can't stop you, can I? I went through so much just to get my hands on it. And I was going to burn it, for her sake. I'm deeply sorry, but I can't allow you to persuade me to stop. Your Honor, if you could please read the contents of the note aloud. Very well! The, ju the judge's voice rang loud and clear through the deathly silent courtroom. In her note, Celeste Impax left to us a record of all that had happened to her. About being used and then thrown away by On Guard. About being engaged to Corda and On Guard's role in destroying that. About how she decided in her despair to end it all. And that's all Miss Impax had to say. There is one thing I would like to say here. The prosecution has no interest in slandering Mr. On Guard. Then what? Our intention, Your Honor, is to establish a motive for murder. Isn't that correct, witness? Yes. On the night of the murder, Juan was going to make the contents of the note public. After the post-ceremony show, 
he was going to hold a press conference. My word! Matt on God values above all else his refreshing like a spring breeze image. Which is why he had to stop this note from being made public. At any cost. And now that's in the evidence. It's on God's fault that woman killed herself. And this time he even went as so far as to kill someone to stop them from revealing that. How terrible. What a selfish person. I guess there are slime ball lawyers out there who'll defend these creeps too. Poor Phoenix. There's no room for doubt here. Mr. DeKiller's client's goal was to obtain this suicide note. And the only person who had needed this note that badly is the defendant. Let's not forget that the bear with the note inside was found at the defendant's house. It seems that we have come to the truth at last. The defendant's motives were entirely selfish. He deserves no sympathy from anyone. Uh, how am I supposed to escape from this one? Why the hesitation, Phoenix? Gumshoe hasn't called yet, so you know what you must do. We have to go and slander ourselves, So the court can make me believe that I'm a fool. I know. I have to carry on and buy him some more time. Okay, there are two deadly pieces of evidence. The figurine and the suicide note. Maybe somehow I can find a way out of the situation through one of those. The gavel is already in the judge's hand, Phoenix. Hurry! Suicide note or the figurine? Which one of these should I pursue? Hmm. My brain is leaning towards the suicide note. Because technically, we don't know that it is hers. Like, from a forensics aspect, a part of it could be that we could argue that there isn't really a way to, like, ba -ba -ba, argue. No, I'm trying to think of the right ways to word it. Essentially, we don't know if this is real. And while the figurine, I, there's nothing with the figurine that we could really press on, right? So I believe that we should press on the suicide note. Because the figurine is clean. Uh, Andrews knew about it. She opened it. But the note, the only person who has had access to this note at all through all of this is Juan. So we might be able to argue that the suicide note is a fake cooked up by Juan to slander Matt on guard. We could argue that there was never a suicide note, but that Juan Corrida held the death of his ex fiance as a trump card to then attack Matt on guard. That is what I am going to believe, maybe. Hmm. I'm gonna say suicide note. I think. I hope. Objection! Please wait, Your Honor! And the court erupts in anger. Oh man, look at that lawyer! He's still going at it? It's like he doesn't care that he's trying to get a killer off the hook. I think Your Honor believes that Matt on guard killed in order to obtain this note. Well, at the same time, I just realized that technically the game could put words in my mouth because my thought process is what I just said, but maybe the game will be like, haha, you fool. Bleh. But oh well, let's <laughs> go down this path. I think Your Honor believes that Matt on guard killed in order to obtain this note. Yes, that is correct. But that seems a little strange. In fact, I think there's a contradiction here. This note was hidden by Mr. Corrida until the night of the murder. If that is the case, I say that Matt on guard could not have known who, what was written on this note. Oh, I didn't think of that, think of it that way. Exactly. But I did think of it that way, and I thought it was rather strange. Welcome to the potentially last stream, I think it is. Again, unless we randomly get a third day, I doubt we will. Everything's going careening towards a hill. 
No one in their right mind would kill for a note without first knowing what it said. Granted, he's a crazy narcissist, so maybe. Order! 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 You, you make a valid point, Mr. Wright! Haha, <laughs> I think I, I did a good. I'm helping a murderer. Oh. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion? It was just a flash, but I think I did rather well on this one. Unfortunately, I think he believes differently. By the way, many people mispronounce Corrida, but as a Spanish speaker what would tell you, it's Corrida. Hmm. I think I've been kind of in the middle, but I think, yeah, mostly I've been going for Corrida. Like, Corridor. But Corrida, okay. Then again, this is a... I don't know if his name, what his name would have been in the Japanese original. And who knows about the localization. I believe a show of appreciation is in order. Huh? The defense seems to be in love with wishing more despair upon itself. I would like to direct the court's attention to this. What is that? It is a very small video camera. Ah, but it was only active between... Uh, for an hour. It's port or Portuguese, actually. Ah. This type of camera is commonly used as a means of spying. Spying? What the... I thought the spy camera was in my possession. Matt on guard and the victim both bought thought of the other as their biggest rival. They even went so far as to use this type of item to find each other's weakness. Manned? The victim, Juan Corrida, was being spied on. His personal life was being watched by none other than Matt on guard. I wonder if I can present the diddly D. Order! Order! <clears throat> Mr. Wright! Yes, Your Honor? You... Don't tell me you knew about your client's spying activities! Well... Sort of? Sort of is not acceptable answer, Mr. Wright! I see you're confused, Mr. Wright. You're probably thinking, but I have the camera that was stuffed in the bear's eye. But this camera that I have is not that same one. Last night I searched the victim's house on a hunch. Using this... Gumshoe's Bug Sweeper. By the way, Mr. Wright, the defendant's fingerprints were found on this camera. Matt on God's fingerprints were on there! Well, Phoenix, it looks like those cameras were hidden all over the place, huh? What am I supposed to say to that evidence? I think this is the end. It's fairly obvious that Mr. On God learned of the suicide note through this. He was watching the victim all along. He got me good this time. I don't have anything to counter that. Or do I? Hey, hey, now what's the lawyer thinking? <laughs> Mommy, is that man the bad killer guy? Shush, stop. Don't look at him. That's like the second time. That he, he's been like, no, don't look at him. The way he's sweating is just ew. It's a term for bullfighting. In Japanese, his name means the invincible. Hmm. Phoenix? Yes, chief? Have you figured out what you're going to do next yet? What I'm going to do next? Does running away like a frightened child work? It parallels on guard because the rivals both have fighting names. That does make sense. I know it seems like Mr. Edgeworth is very close to putting a lid on this case, but in his eagerness to prove his point, he forgot one important thing. And what is that? <laughs> I don't even know at this point. Well, what is it, Mia? There's a piece of evidence that he really should investigate. Something he should investigate? I would really hate to see the good prosecutor get scalded for not remembering to look into the item when he had the chance. Why are you speaking in riddles all of a sudden? <laughs> backseat, 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 Mia. All right, I think this time we finally understand everything. Well, Mr. Wright, you don't have any further objections, do you? What is this piece of evidence that Mia's talking about? Hmm... Again, the only thing I can think of would be the Celeste suicide note. Because... Maybe... It, eh, Mia's insult to Edgeworth hits differently after playing the later games. Eh. But, hmm. Because my thought process is that, again, we do not know if this is a real note. If the note is, like, fully, like, real. It could be fake, but at the same time... Matt on guard was spying on... 
But at the same time, it probably doesn't even matter if it's real or not, because all that matters is Matt needs to believe that it's real. Not that she would ever love, uh, ever love the man who tried to prosecute her sister. Yeah. Then it, then again, <laughs> technically, Edgeworth also prosecuted Phoenix. Hmm. Well, let's see. Can I figure out what it is that still needs to be looked for? I think we need to present some evidence. Go for crazy. I have an objection, Your Honor. <laughs> Matt was about the weakest objection I've ever heard, Mr. Wright. Ha! <laughs> <You're laughs> okay, that's hilarious. Your Honor, the defense has no intention of letting this go so easily. You're beginning to sound desperate. That's just your ima- <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's just your imagination, Your Honor. Fun fact, Franzi was originally supposed to be edgy, but Shu Tak- uh, Takum- Takumi didn't want to see Edgeworth just constantly losing, so he invented Franziska. Hmm, that's actually interesting. And also makes sense, because Edgeworth already lost a lot in the first game, but at the same time, that was kind of a part of his character arc. So having a new main prosecutor for most of the game in this one does work out rather well, and also freshens things up, allows you to add, introduce a new main character, allows you to... Like, do something special with the, the, the diddly-doo guy, Hedgeworth. It'd, well, it'd be also petty, pretty weird if he tried to prosecute Maya after redeeming himself. That's also definitely true, because that would have been the first case he would have been in. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth, this is not like you at all. In your eagerness to prove your point, you've forgotten one very important thing. Hey, isn't that what I just said? So you're telling me that I forgot something? You're so close, Mr. Edgeworth. But there's something you really should examine about this piece of evidence. Again, I think it has to be the suicide note, right? That's the only thing that's really standing out. It's the new piece of evidence. Nothing else in the past really is re like, I don't think anything is relevant here about anything. I was really hoping that the spy camera would have been a thing, and I could have been like, hey, uh, the spy camera was actually on a timer button. I'm gonna go for the suicide note. The autopsy report, obviously. No, I don't think so. Because that has nothing to do with what's currently here. <laughs> Although that would be funny. It's obviously the autopsy report. Oh, sorry, right? I updated that just now. I'm the magic coroner. I can do it whenever. That is... Miss Impact's a suicide note, right? Hmm, who knows? I mean, sure, this suicide note was found inside this bear, but this bear was in my possession until only a few moments ago. Which means... The handwriting on this suicide note has yet to be analyzed! Oh, so... As to whether this pivotal piece of evidence was really written by Miss Impact's or not, that is yet to even be remotely confirmed. But at the same time, Phoenix, they could easily just say it doesn't matter if this suicide note is real. All that matters is that Matt on guard believed that it was real. If Matt on guard believed that the suicide note was indeed real and told of his misdeeds, that is motive enough for murder in this case. Mr. Wright, you can't seriously be suggesting... Mr. Wright, you... Are you saying the suicide note is a fake? Miss Andrews, you're the one who tried to pin this murder on Mr. On Guard. Who's to say you didn't create a fake suicide note and put it into this bear? Ah, and now that's where the the rub is. So we're Phoenix is going to try and say that she had the... The killer give her the diddly d so that she could put the fake note in it, place it at his residence. Yeah, that's decent. <laughs> another layer of uh, framing. How dare you! Your Honor, the defense is indiscriminately accusing the witness again. There's no evidence linking the witness to the suicide note whatsoever. But if this is a fake, then the witness is the only person who could have made it. 
What? Recall the witness's testimony concerning this figurine. The only person other than the victim who could solve the puzzle is the witness herself. Overthinking the game, basically. Miss Andrews, you wrote this note, didn't you? You wrote it so you could use it to frame Matt on guard! I... I did no such thing. Right, if you're going to pronounce this suicide note a fake, then show this court some evidence to support your theory. Mr. Edgeworth, you're the one who presented this scrap of paper as evidence. That means the burden of proof lies with you, the prosecution! Yang! That's enough! Mr. Edgeworth, can you confirm the handwriting on this suicide note? It is as the defense has stated, the handwriting has yet to be analyzed. If that's the case, it seems that yet again we have reached a point where a verdict is impossible. Impos- That's impossible! This isn't good, Phoenix. The judge is going to carry this trial over one more day. I don't think Maya will physically be able to make it another day. I didn't want to have to do this, but I don't have a choice. I request that the, both the prosecution and defense further investigate. Handwriting analysis, my butt, that's just the lawyer trying to buy more time. Literally. On guard is guilty. Look, any idiot can tell you that. I think we've reached the end of the line. <laughs> you mean the endless burgers won't carry her over. <laughs> guilty, guilty, guilty. <laughs> that would be harrowing. An entire gallery of people in a courtroom shouting for blood. What is that sound? It's Gumshoe. Hello, Gumshoe! Uh, what is with him? What's with the sigh? Where's Maya? What happened to Tequila? He, uh... He got away. What?! I'm sorry, pal. I really am. I don't know what to say besides I'm sorry. I wish there was some way to make it up to you. I really do. <laughs> I wonder what everyone else is thinking. Just looking at the lawyer going crazy on the phone. <laughs> well, as things go crazy, remember to stay hydrated. <laughs> yeah, last weekend my friends accused me of sending them anonymous notes because of handwriting analysis and I had to remind them the forensic technique was debunked. <laughs> we found this hideout, pal, but the two of them were already gone. This is terrible. I'm gonna keep looking for them, pal. Don't you worry, I just need a little more time. But, don't tell me we don't. We don't have any more. <laughs> the court just yells guilty. Guilty. They demand death. Do you hear that? They're calling for his head. Mr. Wright, I can't. For us to come this far and... Oh, what is it? Let me talk to Mr. Edgeworth. I can't do that! Mr. Wright, would you please get a hold of yourself? Yes, Your Honor. I'm about to end today's proceedings. You may take your phone calls after. Hold on, Your Honor. Edgeworth, catch! <laughs> Literally take that. <laughs> That's hilarious, they actually... <laughs> struck the, the PNG at him. Are you seriously telling me that Pearl's channeling powers are stronger than Maya? I think actually no, because earlier they literally said that Pearl's Pearl said that his stronger force drew Mia away, so I don't think so. Wait, isn't it a given that they are? I don't know. That's one thing I was wondering, that maybe when it comes to certain things, Maya has more, like, strength at times, and then Pearl's just has more natural talent, so... Maya, at times, can probably exert more power, but Pearls can just do it easier, is my thought. Edgeworth, catch! is one of my favorite AA memes of all time. Mr. Edgeworth! Please, you've got to buy us some more time! Court is in session. <laughs> Cold hearted. I'm sorry, Your Honor. You were saying... Mr. Wright, this is a court of law! Sorry, Your Honor, but... I am reluctant to do this, however. It appears that I have no choice but to suspend proceedings until tomorrow. This time I really can't do anything. Court is now adjourned for the day. Objection! 
Why Edgeworth? <laughs> Please wait, Your Honor. Uh, Edgeworth? W what is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I humbly request another 30 minutes of Your Honor's time. For what purpose? We can perform the necessary tests on this piece of evidence in that time. Hmm. But can you really obtain your results in 30 minutes? I believe we can, Your Honor. But wouldn't it be better if we adjourned for today and then reconvened tomorrow? 30 minutes, please, Your Honor. That's all I'm asking for. Please, Your Honor. Ah, uh, very well. At the prosecution's request, this court will now take a 30-minute recess. But be advised that I will not allow another recess today. I'm not sure if this is helping or hurting us. The court will now take its final recess of the day. <laughs> the 30 minutes is up and the judge reconvenes and says, Well, I guess we have to uh, suspend court proceedings until tomorrow. Edgeworth just pulls out a gun. You will do no such thing, Your Honor. Right. Well, what's going on with Maya's situation? It's a killer. It looks like he got away again. 30 minutes? We can't find her in that time. Ah. Uh, Edgeworth, Mr. Wright, it has come to my attention that I need to ask you this question. Where are all your assistants nothing... Why are all of your assistants nothing but teenage girls? Not even that. I think Pearls is younger. Yeah, she's not even... She's not even 13. Who knows? Ed he would just respond, Well, you see, Edgeworth, none of the Fey clan are dudes. Uh. Ah, did Gumshoe find something? Report! Ah, is that Mr. Edgeworth? We don't have time, just spit it out! Right! It looked like we just missed them, sir. But the killer left a few things behind by accident in his rush to get away. A few things? Can we use any of them as evidence? Ho ho ho! I thought you'd ask, pal. I've got the things he left with me right now, and I'm on my way over. Really? That's odd. Any items like that are usually sent to the crime lab first. We don't have time to wait for those guys, sir! When those guys weren't looking, I swabbed the stuff and ran! What? Well, I'm not a detective anymore, so I had to. I'm really sorry, sir, but I've got to put the law on hold for now. Sounds bad. I hope he doesn't get in too much trouble over this. With my hunk of junk car, I'd say it'd be there in about 20 minutes, sir. Don't worry, I'll be there. Wait for me. All right, just get here in one piece. I'm on a mission and no one can stop me now, sir. No one. I'm pulling out all the stops and running every red light. Items left by the murderer, huh? Maybe there's something among us that would be decisive enough to end this. What do you... Well, that's not bad. It would be hilarious if you just crashed right into court. But... Uh, just something that I have to point out. Technically, we're not looking for decisive evidence. Unless, like, we're looking for... Like, I don't know. <laughs> Imagine Gumshoe's evidence was just food that he stole. Nah, he's not that dumb. But I'm just trying to think... Because the entire point was trying to find Maya. Find Maya so that they could give up the charade and tell the truth. And maybe even catch the killer himself. I wonder if, as an honorable assassin, if we have evidence that proves who the killer is. If, uh, like, he'll be like, oh, well, the jig is up, I guess I'll turn myself in. I'm curious, how do you think this will be resolved now that we're in one of the most climactic endings of all time? I honestly have no idea. Right now, I do not know where we are going because Maya needs to be safe. We And then I, we need to, like, recant everything. I wish Marvel put more advertisements on Hulk. <laughs> He's just a giant banner. I think I saw that meme post in an MK video. Hey, what's wrong? Detective Gamshu, answer me. No one can stop. Me. Oh, that's not good. Don't don't tell me that Gumshoe just fucking dies. What happened? It sounded like he had an accident. I'm guessing his cell phone broke as well. What was he thinking? We've got to hurry and call for help. But we have no idea where he is. His cell phone was broken, and he wasn't driving a patrol car, so no radio either. 
Also, if we don't get those items before they do, the police will take possession of them. No! We can't let that happen! Well, if there is a way we can find out where he is, then we stand a chance. Why or why did Gumshoe have to get into an accident now? Is there any way to find him? Well, there has to be. There has to be. Let's look. No. 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 Radio transceiver, no. Actually, that makes me think of something, but we'll go through the rest of the evidence first. Lotus camera, no. Magazine, no. Hotel map, no. Guitar case, no. Wine glass, no. Crime photo, no. No, 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 no. No, no. No, 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 no. Lost his detective badge, his driver's license, and his sanity all in one day. I don't think it was one day. Or has it been? I think, no, two days. Because he went to give us instant ramen. <laughs> like, the last day. But I think... Beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 beep. She has been tracking the dude. There is a way. That's right! There is a way! What? How? I'm sure we can find out where Detective Gumshoe is through this woman! Why are you bringing up Franziska at a time like this? Oh, I see! I'll try to get in contact with her. The chances are slim, but she's all we have. Franziska. Will she even want to help us? Edgeworth. What is it? I don't have any right to judge anyone ever again. I know my client is guilty. But what I'm doing now... I'm putting the guilt onto someone totally innocent and using the evidence to do so. It might be my turn to say defense attorney Phoenix Wright chooses death. Right? It doesn't suit someone like you to cry useless tears. Whether you did your job well or not, that can only be seen after the verdict has been decided. The verdict? Is Prosecutor Edgeworth here? Yes, Bailiff. There's a phone call for you, sir. They said it was extremely urgent. They're probably finished with the handwriting analysis. I have to go take this call. In the meantime, think hard about what it is you must do. Ah, to be continued. Ah! <laughs> this is like this this has to be the climax, right? Which makes me go, hmm. I love Just for All because it exposes Wright's worst weaknesses. In a way that feels so believable. His friends. Court will now reconvene. I assume both sides are ready. And forces him to grow. That is the one nice thing. Because the last game, there wasn't really any growth for, like, Phoenix or Maya. In this game, it does feel like there's growth for everybody. Whereas with uh, Edgeworth, it was mostly just at the end that... And I like how this game also complements last game's character development for Edgeworth. It is very nice. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. I can understand the defense acting like that. However, why do you seem so distraught, Mr. Edgeworth? I... that is... It's nothing, Your Honor. What's wrong with Edgeworth? It looks like something unexpected just happened to him. Is it actually a fake te Is... was I correct? Is it a fake... <laughs> is it a fake suicide knot? That would be hilarious. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, if you could please tell the court the result of the handwriting analysis on Miss Impact's suicide note. Yeah, the overarching story in the trilogy is great, making it especially awkward how they develop a no-spoiler rule later on. Really? Huh. You want to know something funny? The fact they, that used to murder meant life in prison, but nowadays it's like, you kill this guy, you'll get only five years. And then in this world, it's you kill this guy, you're dead. Y yes, Your Honor. Unfortunately, we have discovered that this suicide note is a forgery. What? What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This... this note was not written by Miss Impax herself. It is a fake. My Hail Mary proved to be correct, somehow. Order! 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 Mr. Edgeworth, would you care to explain what is going on? If this was not written by Miss Impax, then who wrote it? We would need more time to do a more detailed analysis, however, 
It appears that the handwriting matches that of the victim, Mr. Juan Corrida. Well, when you try to lie and your lie turns out true, remember to stay hydrated. M Mr. Corrid? Corrida! Well, well. It looks like Miss Impax never left a suicide note after all. She never wrote anything about on guard. However, Your Honor, even though the suicide note is indeed a fake, Mr. On Guard could not have known that, and so that facts remain unchanged. Yeah, that's what I called. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't even matter if it's real, it just needs to be believable. Acting under the assumption that it was real, he had plotted to possess it. Hmm, that does sound very plausible. This theory that On Guard had no idea that the suicide note was fake. Something seems a little wrong with it. Hmm. Do we even have evidence that would prove that? <laughs> yeah, he, he has writing from Celeste. If you back down, the penalty is hilarious. Oh, really? Well, I'll go ahead and save and we can at least have a fun laugh. <laughs> because I think I know how this is supposed to go. Let's back down and see the funny ahas. It's no use. It's no use! Something feels wrong, but I can't put my finger on what it is. Hmm. Actually, there is something I would like to ask. Mr. Edgeworth, you had stated something earlier to the effect of the defendant had spied on Mr. Corridor's private life. I f did you know uh, they did a stage play on this case, and one thing they changed is Pearl doesn't channel Mia. In fact, she doesn't appear at all. Who Pearl does channel is Impax. Huh. Well, that's... Definitely a choice. That's actually... <laughs> That's actually hilarious if Phoenix could have just gone, Wait, Your Honor, we'll just ask this eight-year-old to become an adult for a second to tell us the truth. The defendant had spied on Mr. Corridor's private life. I believe this would mean that he would have known about the note as well. Th That's... Yes, and so naturally... This means Mr. Ungard would have known that the note was a fake. The The judge? The judge was a smarty man? I was... Wait. I just realized that my idea was wrong. My idea was, oh, on guard has, like, Celeste's handwriting on this diddly D. So he would have known, but the, this was never opened. This was never opened. He never actually saw the suicide note. I am a fool. I don't... So... Uh, uh, huh. Weird. This, that means Mr. On Guard would have known that the note was a fake. Ah! Who would have thought the judge is smarter than me? Order! Order! See here, Mr. Wright! Um, yes, Your Honor? I was the one who thought of the spying thing. Jumping in and stealing my thunder like that is simply... I can't even describe it! Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. I could have even bragged about embarrassing Mr. Edgeworth to my grandchild had you not. For that, I assign you a penalty, Mr. Wright. That is so petty. <laughs> also in the anime version, they have Larry instead of Lada. That's kind of weird. Also, they just dub Impax's voice over Pearl, although I would have wanted Impax to wear Pearl's clothes to be game accurate. Hmm. Odd. But th that's so petty, Mr. Judge. What? Boy, I kept my mouth shut. Honestly, I'm going to keep that penalty because that's amusing. So then, the defendant knew this suicide note was a fake. And if that's true, then the situation has suddenly changed in a very dramatic way. Exactly, Your Honor. The prosecution's theory as to what Mr. Ungard's motive for murder was, it has suddenly disappeared into thin air. But then that makes one wonder, what was? No, because... <clears throat> Because that camera that was in the guy's house was specifically, like, uh, it had on guard's fingerprints on it. So why is there a murder? What is the motive now? Because that would have still ruined his... Actually, no, I think they're still going to go ahead with it because the argument that could be made is that despite... On guard knowing that it was fake, on guard would have still known that it would have been a black mark on his career. 
because it might have caused people to look into his past and see, like, how terribly he treated impacts and other women and ruin his, like, refreshing as a spring breeze vibe that he has going on anyway. So it's entirely possible that he still has a motive, but let's see what uh, our boy, Edgy, has to say. But your honor, it's not as if Mr. On God monitored Mr. Corrida 24 hours a day. Perhaps the victim wrote the note in a place Mr. God did not know of. Well, right back at you, Mr. Edgeworth. Why don't you show us some proof that the victim made the forgery at an unknown place? Yeah, that's fair. Vibes are the main reason I've thought about murder, too. Uh, such is life, really. <laughs> order! 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 Mr. Edgeworth! It looks like this time it is you who has dug his own grave. As I figured. Huh? As you figured? As I figured, it came down to this after all. Mr. Edgeworth, you are not making any sense. When I heard the results of the handwriting analysis, I thought this might happen. The question is, what next? What next? If the prosecution can't prove Mr. Ungard's motive through the evidence, then we must prove it from another angle. Well, I agree with you there. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to call a witness to the stand at this time. Oh, well, that's fine. However, this witness... This witness is a little unusual. Edgeworth stuttering? This is not like him at all. Unusual? Well, what sort of witness is this person, Mr. Edgeworth? This witness is one who is perfectly fit to answer once and for all the question of who was it that hired Shelley to kill her to commit murder. That's impossible! Who in the... No such person exists who can answer that question with such certainty! Then just prove motives aren't necessary. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Edgeworth, who is this witness? It is... it's... um... Yes, go on, who is it? The man himself, Mr. Shelley DeKiller. Oh, Mr. DeKiller. Wait! Shelley DeKiller? How, how, are you, how, how are you gonna do that, Edgeworth? Um, you mean the killer? Uh, I mean the assassin. Yes, Your Honor. He's coming here to the witness stand. Well, yes, in a manner of speaking. I recognize that this is a very unusual circumstance, so I ask you for permission. Well, Mr. Wright? Yes? Is this all right with you? Do I have a choice here? I can't really do much else to drag this trial out. The defense has no objections, Your Honor. I wonder if it really is all right to do this. <laughs> very well, then. The prosecution calls its witness to the stand. How are you going to do that? How are you going to do that? He's not even here. He's... Edgeworth, is there no other way left to us? I want to... What are you going to do? I have to see this. Now then, witness. Um, your name and, uh, your occupation, please. <laughs> that is hilarious! <laughs> Very good, sir. My name is Shelley DeKiller. Oh, that's hilarious. The transceiver looks like him. Mustache at the bottom, lying down the middle. Eye patch, that is hilarious. My name is Shelley DeKiller. I am a professional assassin. I, I say, what is going on here? Your Honor, how can you remain so calm? And what is the meaning of this two-way radio? Actually, Your Honor, it is delivered to me just now. And it came with a condition. As long as we do not trace its source, Mr. DeKiller will testify to this court. This is... I'm gonna say it! This is weirder than the parrot! The parrot at least had a symbol of logic! This is just weird. So this must be what the urgent phone call he got earlier was about. Oh no, this will not do! I cannot allow this in my court! First of all, we can't even be sure this really is Mr. DeKiller himself! Witness, please present some proof that you are, in fact, Shelley DeKiller. I understand. Please wait a second. I'm so hungry. M Maya! Maya! A, a voice! Mr. Wright, can you confirm anything from this? The defense has no objections to this person. We are satisfied that this man is indeed Shelley to kill her. It looks like we have a run into yet another unexpected turn of events. 
Well, it doesn't seem like we have much, too many choices under these circumstances, so... Now then, witness, there is one thing I would like to confirm before we speak of anything else. And what would that be? At the request of a client, you killed Mr. Juan Corridor. Is this correct? It is as you say. I did indeed kill Mr. Corridor. Uh. Now that we have answered that, let's move on to the name of your client. Very well. This is all just a bad dream. Yes, that's it. A bad dream. Shelley to kill her. What's he going to say? Yeah, what will he say? There is something I must first state. To an assassin, nothing is more important than the trust between a client and himself. And that is the real reason I am here today on this witness stand. It is my wish that you grasp this concept before I give the name of my client. Hmm, Mr. Dickiller seems to be a very clever man. I'd almost say he seems to be mocking us. While he may appear to be our enemy, Your Honor, Mr. De Killer is only stating the truth. He is no hypocrite. He has always stood by this one belief. You mean about this trust between his clients and himself thing? Hmm. It seems to be a level of trust beyond what people like me can comprehend. Well, Mr. Wright, are you ready to cross-examine the witness? Yes, Your Honor. There's no way to know what's coming next, so stay cool and collected, Phoenix. This is just weird. There is something I must first state. I don't really think there's much to press there. To an assassin, nothing is more important than the trust. So let's press on that. The trust between you and your client. I provide my services in a fast and efficient manner. In exchange, I trust that my clients are discreet about me and my identity. If too many people knew my face, it would be quite troublesome. And that is why you're testifying in this manner. This is the first time one of my clients has ever been accused of murder. I must preserve the particular name so my clients can trust me. But couldn't someone stab you in the back and break your trust? It has never happened before, but if it ever did... Yes? That person wouldn't be my client for very long. They would certainly... Th that's enough! Please, no more! Very well. It was only a hypothetical anyway. So we need in this section to tell the killer that our boy ha blackmailed him, but I don't think that we... Or, like, has blackmail material, but I don't think we have... We have the spy camera. <laughs> and that is the reason I am here today. That seems a little strange to me. I mean... You're about to tell us the name of your client. I would think that this would be a very bad for them. It doesn't matter to me. This client has already broken the rules and acted outside of their prescribed role. Their role? This person tried to implicate another of the crime in order to save themselves. And this is a trespass that cannot be forgiven. You? Who gave you the right to be so high and mighty? To the gentleman who spoke just now, excuse me, but would you care to die? Uh, no, no, I uh, didn't say anything. The judge had to better watch himself. So it was Phoenix Wright. That would be, that would be kind of hilarious if you played a game, you're the good guy, and then suddenly, psych, you like are a sleeper agent, and you get activated to do things, and your real self is an enemy bad guy. It is my wish that you grasp this concept before I give you the name of my client. It was the judge. The judge committed the murder. Well, we could have accused him in the Big Berry Big Top thing. We understand, so please, tell us the name of your client. I'm afraid I cannot do that. I still have a few things to say before I do. Ah, that egomaniacal. It's not good for your health to be so aggravated. You won't live very long if you let everything bother you. Somehow, that coming from an assassin makes it less than comforting. I don't really care about all this extra fluff. Just tell us the name already. Patience. Try to calm down a little. It's important to try and understand his mindset. He seems very steadfast and closed, so you're going to have to work to get him to talk. I'm not his therapist, you know. Hmm. 
Do I have to... Uh, I guess maybe I need to press on this as well. We can hear anything you have to say later. Can you please just tell us your clients? I don't think you understand your place, Mr. Attorney. I said, this is something I must first state. Do you know what the word first means? Sorry. Go on. Well, it appears this one witness you can't badger, Mr. Wit uh, Mr. Wright. That's only because you don't know about my situation. Why is Phoenix so impatient when he ha wants to stall the trial? Probably because this is, like, I get the feeling that since this guy is talking right now and from what he said, he knows that on guard bla is, has blackmail material on him. So he's willing to betray his client, and so he's like, come on. Hmm. Hmm. Well, let's press everything again. Maybe I need to present the the diddly D. Hmm. Oh, hey, you're, you, okay, a new thing happened. You said that your client had already broken the rules. A person who frames another is the worst kind of human. And that's why you feel you, feel you can betray this person. I have no trust relation with a client who can't understand their assigned role. Just my luck, an assassin with a conscience. Who would have figured? Now then, everyone, do you think you can understand my logic? This case just keeps getting better and better. If you can't, then I'm afraid we can't proceed. Everyone understands your point, I think, really. In that case, I believe I am prepared to disclose the information you seek. You have made it crystal clear that you value trust over all else. I believe we are ready. Excellent. And that is the reason I am here today on this witness stand. Well, I guess let's press for everything. I mean, you're about to name a client. But, uh, it doesn't matter to me. This client has already prescribed role. Their role within this cannot be forgiven. I'll give you to be my Would you like to die? Now then, I do believe it's time I revealed the name of my client. Don't you agree? I don't really care about... Oh, I forgot to press on that. I'm a fool. I am the fool man. What is it? Um, now I can't bring myself to ask the client's name. If you can't ask it, Mr. Wright, then I will. Witness, what is the name of your client who requested the murder of Mr. Juan Corrida? That person's name is... <laughs> Adrian Andrews. What? Okay. Oh. Oh. Oh, he's... Ooh. He doesn't know that he's been betrayed. But witness! That's not who you told me it was earlier! Pray tell, what are you talking about, Mr. Prosecutor? I should think I know my own client, and it is Adrian Andrews. What? The, this can't be on the phone earlier! What's going on here? My guess is that Mr. DeKiller just stabbed Mr. Edgeworth in the back. Stabbed Edgeworth in the back? I'm sure in order to get an audience with this court, Mr. DeKiller told him a different name. Mad on guard, perhaps? I knew it. This... this is outrageous! I was deceived! This witness is telling a very serious lie! But, but you're the one who summoned the witness! Ugh! You, Shelly to kill her? Edgeworth should have known. He said he'd do anything to get Matt guilty, but it's... Uh, well, not guilty. But it's believable and humanizing mistake for Edgeworth to make. My testimony is the truth. The defendant at the moment is Matt on guard, am I correct? All I wish to do is help procure his acquittal. <laughs> hmm. Wow. All of a sudden, it feels like we can actually win this. Yeah. The prosecution has failed to provide a motive and has instead provided this suicide note, which is a forgery created by the victim. Furthermore, there is a possibility the defendant himself knew it was a fake. But most definitive of all, we have heard from the assassin himself the name of his client, Mr. DeKiller's client, who requested the murder. No. With all this evidence, it is obvious to me that this means that Matt on guard is innocent. How did those last remarks not implicate the killer as a liar? I don't know. 
I seem to have caused you all a bit of confusion. Please continue your discussion and call me when you have reached a verdict. Bailiff, please bring Miss Adrian Andrews in immediately. What now? With the way this is going on, Guard will be found innocent. This may be our last chance to save Maya. Yeah, but... But Edgeworth is right. The killer is lying. I mean, if the judge had any sense, he'd not blindly take the words of an assassin. What? The thing I want to happen right now is I want us to call the killer back and present the spy cam and say that your real client has betrayed the rules. And on guard, my client, I know he's guilty. Can I live with myself if I win this? Who would have believed that the prosecution's own witness would absolve the defendant? Your Honor, the prosecution requests permission to further question the witness. Shelley the killer is suddenly lying under oath. Hmm. It wasn't me. Listen, everyone, please. That testimony just now, it was one big lie. Miss Andrews, the suicide note may have been a fake, but that man, Matt, he's the reason Celeste died. And Juan's death, it was all because he got pulled into Matt's twisted world. That testimony just now, you have to believe me, it was a horrible, horrible lie. But Mr. DeKilla himself has testified. He has named you as his client. No, that's not true. Also, there is quite a bit of evidence that points to you. The knife and button donning the nickel samurai costume. But that's, that's... You even have a motive. We know that Miss Celeste Impacts was a large part of your life. You wanted to follow her, and you wanted revenge against the two who hurt her. I would say you have plenty of reason to want them both dead. I know. Mr. Wright! You... You know the truth. Tell them! Tell them the real story, who the real killer is! Tell them! Please help me. What the fuck do I do? Yes, I know the truth. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. I believe we have reached the end of this trial. Therefore, I ask the defense for any final words or opinions. Hello, hello, YouTube chat. Hmm. We have to keep things going because, again, I want the moment of presenting the spy cam to the killer. I have to decide, do I take the not guilty verdict and save Maya? Or do I throw this chance away and wait for Gumshoe's new evidence? What am I supposed to do? We're gonna go on! We're gonna keep the trial going! Phoenix, I can't do it, Mia. I can't accept a not guilty. You're a lawyer, I know. But, but Madame Guard is a killer, a murderer. I can't, I can't let him get away with this. I can't let someone else take the fall. <laughs> If I let Miss Andrews be convicted, then I'm no better than on guard. And even though I don't want to admit it, I have to face the fact that it is because of Edgeworth that I now know the real truth. He could have gotten on guard convicted so many times over, but he never took a single one of those chances. If I take this verdict right now, I'd be betraying his trust. His trust? I never thought about it until now. I... I trust him? Yes, you do. Mr. Wright, your opinion, please. The defense requests that we be allowed to further question Mr. DeKiller. Am I hearing you correctly, Mr. Wright? Right. But, but, that witness has cleared your client through his testimony. Your job here is done. I'm not done yet. To see through witnesses' lies and find the truth. That is my job, Your Honor. There's still more evidence to look at. And I'm sure that once those pieces arrive here in this very courtroom, a miracle will occur. Very well. This trial will continue. Mr. Edgeworth, pre... Pre? No. Please reestablish connection with Mr. DeKilla. Right away, Your Honor. Has a verdict been reached? Before that, we would like to talk with you a little more. About? All you needed from me was the name of my client. What else could you need from me? Well, actually, we'd like to hear everything you know about this case. That is how things are usually done. What is he talking about, usually done? But what shall we have him testify about now? Mr. DeKilla, if you don't mind, please testify about your client in more detail. You legal people and your procedures, is it any wonder no one likes to go to court? 
<laughs> I like that he's deciding to go with this. As I have already stated quite a few times, Adrian Andrews is my client. However, one thing I simply cannot overlook is tampering with the scene of the crime. My client did it to frame another for the crime, while pretending to be the first person to discover the body and enter the scene. Adrian Andrews already knew from the very beginning that Juan Corridor was dead. But even more appalling is the creation and planting of the knife and button. That act is what I was referring to when I said my client had broken the rules. Hmm. We need to remember the past parts, because, uh... We need to prove to him that she didn't know that he was dead immediately. This is most unexpected turn of events. For the, um, fifth time now. However, this time everything has finally been revealed. Just a second, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth. We still have the cross-examination to do. But you don't need to question testimony like this. Do you, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, the defense will question the witness. As if I have a choice here. Huh? Why? What this witness has said is nothing but beneficial to the defense's case. If you scrutinize the testimony, then... Then I'll expose the lies in that oh-so-beneficial testimony, I suppose. I don't understand what's going on anymore. That makes two of us. We'll press on everything, but I think I have an idea. Uh, we'll skip over that. Let's dilly -dee. I would think that most people wouldn't be able to overlook a person hiring another to kill. If I had a problem with such a thing, I wouldn't be a very effective at my job. Ah, yeah. Well, change in occupation might be good for you. However, I will say this. Even though I'm the one who does the deed, my clients are always the real guilty party. What are you, Thane Krios from Mass Effect 2? Oh yes, my body is the one that does the killing. It is an instrument, a weapon. And that goes without saying, Mr. De Killer. And their fate is to live with the knowledge of their guilt on their shoulders. However, my client this time thought they could run away from their guilt. My client did it to frame another for the crime. I don't feel like we need to press on that. So you're saying most clients wouldn't do such a thing? That is correct. Usually most people try to create an alibi for themselves. If you should use my services, Mr. Attorney, I would suggest your plan... You plan your alibi too. <laughs> plan for your alibi too. Uh, no, I already told you. I have no intention of using your services ever. Why does he keep looking at me like I'm the one on trial here? Adrian Andrews already knew from the very beginning that Juan Cora Corrida was dead. From the very beginning? That is correct. From before my client visited the room. All of my clients know precisely what the situation is at all times. I wonder if that's really true. And that's odd. And that's my tell. That, my dear friends. Because if she knew that he was indeed dead, why would she leave a wine glass there? Thank you so much for taking the time to testify, Mr. DeKiller. What is the meaning of that attitude? When Adrian Andrews entered the victim's room, your client had no idea Juan Corrida had been murdered. But how? How do you know that? From this wine glass, Your Honor. The glass? Mr. DeKiller's supposed client thought Mr. Corrida had only fainted, which is why this glass of tomato juice was poured for the victim. Hmm, but isn't that just a part of Adrian Andrews' calculated plan? That is not possible, Your Honor. This glass bears the fingerprints of that person. Had this been planned, they would never have left their fingerprints behind. I see your point. Mr. Edgeworth, what's your opinion? Strangely enough, I had the same exact thought just now. Witness, how do you explain this strange phenomena? Isn't it a waste of time to ask about such a minute detail? It's not a very important point anyway, correct? I'm afraid you are mistaken. If Adrian Andrews really is your client as you claim, then your client should have had the knowledge of Mr. Corridor's death. 
If not, then that can only mean that Adrian Andrews was never your client at all. How strange. Yes? Why is it that the attorney has yet to raise an objection at this absurd situation? Uh-oh. Phoenix, if the killer figures out what we're up to, we're in real trouble. Yeah, I know. <laughs> now objection. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm surprised. You know you can't say things like that without any evidence. Ah, sorry. Well, that was an awfully weak objection for the two of you. <laughs> it's like the judge is like, I'm so used to these two rapscallions. What's going on? Anyway, I'm positive there was a contradiction in that testimony. The prosecution requests further testimony concerning when the request was taken. Very well. Right now, I have to buy us more time. While we wait for items the killer left behind to get here, I just know that the very outcome of this trial lies with those items. Everything is crazy. This request came to me uh, about a week ago. While you're having the strangest cross-examination ever at this point in time, remember to stay hydrated. It was a request for my services on the night of the award ceremony. We met at a certain bar to discuss and finalize a few matters. That is what occurred. I trust my memory, and I believe I have made no mistake. Hmm. So you physically met your client? That is correct. Meeting one's client is the first step to building trust, in my opinion. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Well, let's press on everything and see where we go. But first we're going to save, because paranoia, paranoia. We already had a humorous uh, penalty because it was funny. One week ago, are you sure? Yes, I am quite sure. I, of course, had my own preparations, and I was barely able to finish. When you request my services, Mr. Attorney, I hope you'll keep that in mind. That would be hilarious if we actually do ever hire the killer in the future, or a the killer. I doubt it, but it would be hilarious. Please, stop. <laughs> in any case, my client this time had a very specific date and time in mind. A specific date and time? It was request of services on the night of the award ceremony. Did you ask why on the specific night? No. I tried to fulfill all the conditions of my client's request. But as for why, I only had my suspicions. Your suspicions, huh? Hmm. Do we want to press further? I don't think it would hurt to press further. Let's press further. So what are these suspicions you had? Why did your client request that night? I'm sure it was all for the bear. The bear? My client spoke of it. I'm sure there will be a bear-shaped figurine in one Corridor's room. I would like you to retrieve that item for me. You must be talking about the bear puzzle. Inside that figurine was a suicide note. Naturally, the victim brought it to him, with him to his hotel room. He was planning to publicly disclose its contents at the press conference after all. That is correct. And if he, I had not done the job that night, I would not have known where the bear figurine was. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, was this testimony just now of any importance? I do not know. I'm trying to think. I don't think so. I do not think so because what we're trying to do... I don't even know what we're trying to do. I'm going to say that it was not important. What did the killer sounds plausible, but in the end it's just his conjecture. No, Your Honor, I don't think it's very important. Hmm. Well then, witness, please continue. We'll do the met at a bar. So you physically met Adrian Andrews, right? Of course I did. What was that? Was that a brief pause? Press further. Witness, I would like for you to give us a few more details. I always meet my clients as a matter of principle. I have never taken a request by telephone or mail. And why is that? That's because I value the trust between a client and myself above all else. 
and the only way to establish that is to speak to the client while looking them in the eye. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright. Very important. He paused. <laughs> of course. It was very important, Your Honor. If Mr. The Killer had met his client before the murder, then it's unlikely he is mistaken. Hmm. So you're saying that his client really was Adrian Andrews? Uh, um, I guess so. You see, it is just as I said. <laughs> I'm so lost. Who the heck am I supposed to be helping here? Calm down, Phoenix. Think carefully and relax. Hmm. So I'm probably going to need to go back and... Because, yeah, <laughs> say it's not important. But that feels like a weird twisty. Because normally you're supposed to, like... Because I thought it was... Uh, press further and then we need to... Say not important. Because, yeah, it's just like, it feels weird. That, like, I feel like something would have happened the other way. It feels like this is it. Something's off. Why he meets his clients is not important, and that wasn't the point. Witness, please stop sidestepping my questions. But what do you mean by that? My question was, did you really meet Adrian Andrews in person? I have already told you, Mr. Wright, I did. It was only through talking with him face to face that I... That's why her name is Adrian Andrews. That's when I thought I can trust this person as a client. Hmm. It's true what they say about talking face to face. Well, Mr. Wright, was this testimony just now of any importance? I think that time, because he said, he said him. Now that was very important. If I heard what I think I heard just now, then I think I've got him. Your Honor, I believe the testimony just now was of the utmost importance. Uh, really? If that's the case, witness, please include your statement now in your testimony. Very well. And now I guess we present her profile because she's not a man. Well, I just noticed something. I have to go back. I have to. I just now noticed John Doe and Shelly DeKiller, even though we know he's the same. That's kind of interesting. I wonder why he didn't just supplant John Doe. I would like to go over this one more time. You met Adrian Andrews at a bar and took the request at that time. Yes, that is correct. And that's when you thought he was trustworthy. How many times must I repeat myself? That is correct. I'm sorry, but that's an impossible tale. Just as impossible as staying hydrated. What? Shelly the Killer. You've never met the real Adrian Andrews. Why, why would you say that? Because you made one very big slip up about her. So what is the issue? Ugh. What did you say just now? Did you read my message? Oh, oh, I, I did miss that. What's funny is that uh, that in stage play, the killer does show up in court himself. The stage play sounds so weird <laughs> and kind of kind of interesting. About her. If you'd ever met Adrian Andrews in person, one look would have told you that she is a woman. Ah! <laughs> I love that the radio actually reacts. Oh, order, order in the court, Mr. Wright. What is the meaning of this? This witness testified to the following that he always meets face to face with his clients when taking their requests. But he has never met Adrian Andrews in person. Yes, your honor, that is exactly the point. That means Mr. DeKiller's client could not have been Mrs. Andrews at all. Uh, nah. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, I understand your logic on this one. However, why would the assassin make such a basic mistake? I believe it has to do with her name, Your Honor. Her name? Yes, Adrian Andrews is, without a doubt, a very androgynous name. Hmm, yes, I see. Unluckily for Mr. De Killer, the entire time he was on the stage, almost on the stage, on the stand, no one had stated Adrian Andrews' gender. This is also a funny, like, parallel to the tutorial case, actually, because... Because in the first case, 
the guy misspelled Maggie because it was a name that he only ever heard, and it's the same thing, making an assumption just based on a name. And wouldn't a killer find suspicious that Adrian was a girl's name and he met a guy? Well, Adrian isn't a girl's name, and he never met... <laughs> and... Actually, that would be kind of amusing if... That would actually be kind of amusing if he did actually genuinely believe that Adrian Andrews was his client, but no. Matt on guard is too famous for that. He's just covering for uh, Matt on guard. I also think Miss Andrews could sound like Miss Andrew because she hates the two men and their toxic masculinity, but I don't know if that's intentional. Yeah, kind of. It's probably an unintentional, though. The entire time he was on the stand, no one had stated Adrian Andrews' gender, and so he simply picked the wrong gender to go with. What? What is going on? Shelly the Killer, this court demands an explanation. Um, I, I think somehow I must have mixed up this client with another. So does this mean you remember something different now? Yes, of course. Please, if you would allow me to testify once more. Ah, uh, I know he's just going to spit out more lies. Very well, but this time please give us the truth and nothing but the truth. See the truth and nothing but the truth. Yes, now I remember. I took that request by mail, but you just contradicted yourself. There have been times when I took a job without having met my client. Despite your first thing, saying that you always did it by diddly diddly day. So you're a, you're a fool. You're, you're purging yourself not to get the trust of your people. The request was for the murder of one Corrida and two or other three. Two or other three? And two or three other small things. When I saw the name at the end of the letter, I thought my client to be a man. Hmm, so you took this job through a letter. He didn't mention anything about a letter in his earlier testimony, which means he's deliberately lying. Be careful, Phoenix. If you break the assassin's testimony completely, it's over for us. I know, I can't make him suspicious, but... I think we're okay, like we can do this. As long as he's standing there across from me, no matter how strong of a punch I throw, he'll counter it. Now then, let's begin with the cross-examination. Now, like he said, we can't, like, break the testimony too much, so let's skip over that for now. And this, this is the same thing, just a continuation of we could be like, Oh, but you said earlier. So let's start with this one. We can, if we don't find anything else, we can diddly deep. Two or three other things. Yes. And what were these other things? A few other things that have nothing to do with this case. Hmm. What should I do? Should I let him slide? No, we, we gotta press further. It'd be really bad if I pushed his buttons the wrong way and he got mad. Whether or not they're related to this case is for the court to decide. Mr. Attorney. Yes? Everything I have said from the beginning has been nothing but beneficial to your client, which is why I wonder what is pushing you to continue with this cross-examination. Could it be that you are planning to betray your own client? Th that's... I smell the stench of a backstabber. And should you turn out to be one? Wait! Uh-oh! This is looking bad! I shouldn't press my luck. But should we? Should we press? Well, in for a penny, in for a pound. Witness, this is a very important matter. Please cooperate and tell us what these other jobs your client requested were. If it's truly that important, I suppose I don't have much choice. The bear figurine. The bear figurine? After the assassination of the target, I was to find that figurine. I was told that this job was just as important as the actual killing. And where was that figurine? It was inside Mr. Corrida's suitcase. And then what did you do next? I handed it over to my client right away. You gave it to your client? Interesting. Hmm. This information certainly sounds important to me. Witness, please include what you have just stated in your testimony. As you wish. Do you know the Phoenix's hyper combo is literally a parry because he's objecting the opponent? Huh, never thought of that before. One of these was to find the bad figurine. Hmm. 
So maybe we present the figurine? Like, uh... Like, I feel like that's a thing to do. Because surely he'd want to know more. Let's do it. Let's go crazy. Let's play randomly. Shelly to kill her. If you'd really given the bear to Miss Andrews... Oh, yeah, that's also true. He wouldn't have known that it was a, like, uh... No, because he didn't say anything, because I thought maybe he said, ooh, give her the bear box. Then this item should not have been inside it. This item? I see where you're going. I just had the instinct. My body just went, hmm, press figurine. Yep, that's where I'm going. Where is everyone going? Do I need to pack a suitcase? Your Honor, please think back to Miss Andrew's testimony. And I was going to burn it for her sake. If even for a single minute, this bear had actually been in Miss Andrew's hands, I'm sure she would have taken the suicide note and burned it! Order! 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 So that's where you two are going! So by the very fact that this suicide note was still inside the bear, it tells us that your client didn't know how to disassemble the puzzle. Which means... It means, Your Honor, that it is impossible for Adrian Andrews to be the client! Oh! How does it keep fixing itself? It doesn't even, like, pull glasses out of nowhere. Order! Uh, order! 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 Uh, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I know you may not know the names, but do you have a favorite music track from this game? Honestly, I like the music that's playing right now. And, uh... Yeah, the music when the court begins is also good, but for some reason, the music in this one blend in a bit more than the first game, so I haven't really been taking too much note about them. <laughs> I... I'm sure I mentioned this before. How I hate traitors above all else. I think your cross-examination has clearly demonstrated something to me. You... You must wish to break your end of our agreement. No, that's not... That's enough. If that is your only... Your intention, then there's only one thing for me to do. Wait, please! Gentlemen, ladies, please excuse me. I have a matter that I must attend to. No! Please! Not that! Please, wait! Mr. Attorney, bring this trial to a speedy end, or I may... And I may stay my hand. Otherwise... Uh, what in the... Mr. Wright, are you... Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor? I didn't understand this witness's outburst just now. Do you think there's a need to hear more testimony, or is this enough? Well, we should. Edgeworth, we can't do this. If we keep this up, Maya, she'll... The prosecution, I... What has come over everyone? Even you are... The prosecution rests. What is going on around here? The prosecution has no further questions, Your Honor. What? This is a very weird court case. Well, I never thought I'd see the day. This is a most unusual situation. If the prosecution rests with no further objections... I just, I don't know. Everything. So, this is such a weird trial. I do not know. Ba -ba -ba -ba. I don't know. This is, I'm starting to feel intense. If the prosecution rests with no further questions, then the prosecution has failed to uphold its stance. If that is the case, then even though I am reluctant, I must believe that Mr. DeKiller's testimony is accurate. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah. And that would mean that Shelley DeKiller's client is Adrian Andrews. Uh, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. 
If I end the trial here, right now, then your client, Matt on guard, will be declared innocent. And in his place, Adrian Andrews would be charged with murder. But Miss Andrews would be charged with murder. This is a very bad situation. Don't you think? The prosecution has no further questions, so we will now hear the defense's final remarks. Bailiff, please bring the defendant, Matt on guard, to the stand. The items from the killer's hideout didn't make it in time. We tried as hard as we could, but it looks like our time has run out. I can't believe it. The outcome now lies in your hands. Dude, did the old guy finally decide? To be honest, I can't think of you as a truly innocent and good person. You have done enough evil to drive a woman to suicide. But, at least on the charge of murder, it would appear you are innocent. Huh. He's really gonna reveal himself. So, I guess even the old fuddy-duddy figured me out. Mr. On Guard! What an atrocious lawyer I have, giving his own client up like this. And that refreshing like a spring breeze crap, it's just an atrocious. Don't you agree? Anyway, get on with it and pronounce me innocent already. Right, Mr. Lawyer? Should I side with justice? Or should I save Maya's life? Obviously, we're gonna side on justice. Although that would be kind of mean of them to actually have Maya, like, be shot and killed if you actually go through with being justice. You better get on guard a guilty sentence, okay? Well, as you stare down the pit of death, remember to stay hydrated. But, but if I did that, Maya will die! <laughs> Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, justice for few. <laughs> but if I say he's innocent, then Miss Andrew will be charged as the murderer. Do I say he's guilty or not guilty? Either choice I make, someone's life is going to end. It all hinges on what I choose. Now then, Mr. Wright, let's hear the defense's final statements. If the person who hired the assassin was Adrian Andrews, then your client, Mr. Matt on guard, is innocent. <laughs> There's no need to ask, old man. After all, my lawyer's going to say what I want, aren't you? Right. I can't. I can't do this. But I have to decide something. I can't count on the evidence to help me anymore. I have to listen to my heart. My client, Matt on guard. <laughs> what do I do? 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 I, like... Because obviously if we do the not guilty, it'll like run out immediately. Right? I just feel like... Mm. Mm. Then again, this could also be a trick one. Because a lot of the time it seems the game kind of railroads you with your answers from time to time. <laughs> I mean, the stream is titled Saving Mystic Maya. But at the same time... We have to play the game to save Mystic Maya, don't we? Hmm. I mean, I'm... Hmm. I'm trying to decide. My brain is going on fire. The real way to save Mystic Maya is to go with her final request. He's guilty. And now the silence. Again, where does he even get the glass? We are waiting for your answer, Mr. Wright. But on God, your client deserves an answer. Maya, I'm sorry. Man on guard is... <laughs> is Francisca, apparently. <laughs> she gets a whole splat page. A splash page. F Francisca von Karma? W what are you doing? Oh! You see now, don't you, Mr. Phoenix, right? 
This is exactly why you should never take your eyes off that scruffy fool. Another illusion of choice. <laughs> that's that's what ached into the back of my mind at this at the at the point. But when you first are faced with those, they feel so intense. Make sure you choose your next choices very carefully because you'll get a bad ending if you present the wrong evidence. Oh boy. As you face the world of hell, make sure to stay hydrated. Did you bring them? The final pieces? Do you have them? You should know better than to ask that, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Our Von Karma is perfect in every way. The evidence is here in perfect condition. Don't worry about Scrappy. He's fine, and his injuries are minor. All of the items are inside these. Yeah, this ending is great. I've read in comment sections about people who get spoiled about this case. Luckily for me, I didn't spoiler dump on myself until the next game. I'll have to try and not spoiler dump myself on the next game. What a filthy old coat this is! That's Gumshoes. I can spot his tattered rags anywhere. I apologize for its ugliness, but there was nothing else to wrap the items in. <laughs> I fought long and hard this whole trial. All for what is inside that raggedy coat. I'm sure that inside that coat lies a crucial piece of evidence. <laughs> his injuries are minor. I typically do worse in a day. That will... Well, if that were true, then he would have been able to run here himself. Your Honor, inside that filthy coat are the defendant's final pieces of evidence. Your final evidence? And everyone's just like, but he, he had the court in his hand. This trial is already over. All that remains for me to hand down my verdict. I do not believe that any evidence presented now would change the outcome of this trial. What? Your Honor, it is our duty to examine every piece of evidence down to the last. I don't know why I snorted. I took a breath and my whole body just went, Argh. I request that Miss Von Karma be allowed to present these pieces of evidence. Hmm, I suppose you are right, Mr. Edgeworth. I grant permission to do so. However, this one obvious rule applies here. If these items do not bring up any new points, then they will not be accepted by the court. So we need to be extra careful on how we induct these evidences. Now, Miss Von Karma, if you please. These pieces of evidence are items left by the killer during his escape from the police. Hmm. He must have been in quite a rush. Yes, Your Honor. The killer left three pieces of evidence. Somewhere among the evidence we're about to see, there will be something that will turn this whole situation around like a miracle. I'm sure of it. That is all we can hope for. The first item is a pistol. Does the killer's pistol have anything to do with the case? Hmm. I guess it doesn't hurt to ask for more details. And then we probably loop back around here. And more more details are not needed. And then we can be like, hey, we make a final decision. Does this pistol have any relation to the case? We have yet to perform a ballistics test, so I can't say anything for certain. However, I believe it has something to do with this case. At least with me. Oh yeah, because he did shoot her. And that's the pistol that he used to shoot you, isn't it? That's what I believe, yes. Oh. I kept the bullet they removed from my shoulder as a sort of memento. I'm sure it'll be an excellent sample for the test. So that's the pistol that was used to shoot Franziska. It's probably not going to help us very much. The second piece of evidence is this videotape. I bet the killer took that from the on guard mansion. Hmm. Obviously, we should probably answer for more questions. What is more details are not needed even here for? Have you checked the contents of that tape? Unfortunately, there was no time to. Oh, yeah. But I would speculate that this tape is very important. Why would you say that? Because he came back to his hideout for it. D the killer went back for it? That's right. It looks like he was trying to recover it. He injured three of the officers at the site. Hmm. But somehow it looks like they managed to protect it from the killer. Surely the killer is an ordinary man. The last piece of evidence is this bellboy's uniform. Is that a uniform from the Gatewater Hotel? Well, at this point, let's ask for more details. Was this used during the crime? I am almost certain it was. There's even a pair of black leather gloves on in, in one of the pockets. There's no doubt about it. The killer was wearing this on the night of the murder. 
There's one thing I found interesting about this uniform. And what is that? There's a button missing on the uniform. A button? It's a very unique button. I'm sure if we were to recover it, it would provide us with an interesting clue. Hmm. Missing button uniform. That is all I have to present, Your Honor. It's just as I thought. And what is that, Your Honor? I'm sure we were under no were we under normal circumstances. These items from Shelley to Killer's hideout would be very important clues. However, our question is not who did the killing. It is who is the client. Yes, that is correct. And these three items do not tell us anything about it. The, uh, the tape, maybe. I still have the tape. The tape seems like it would be important. Thank you for your hard work, Ms. Von Karma. You may step down now. Wait, Your Honor. Please allow me to examine this new evidence. Overruled. This court already has all the evidence it needs to hand down a verdict. Wonderful. Absolutely splendid. This judge is such a brilliant man, isn't he? Is this the end? Phoenix. <coughs> Excuse me. I knew it. There's no such thing as a miracle in this world, is there? I think you're wrong. I think they do exist. But you have to make the miracle happen. You've come this far. You can't give up now. But, but, no matter how you think about it, it's... It's... Try for my sake. Just think about it for a second. There are two ways out of this situation for us. T two? The first... Make on guard wish from the bottom of his soul for a guilty verdict. Huh? The killer was always a place for his client's wishes, well wishes first. If on guard himself wishes to be convicted, then he will let his hostage go. Th that may be true, but that's asking for me to do the impossible. The second way... Forced the killer to end his contract with Ungard. Stop backseating me, and Neon Icy thinks about everything long beforehand. Now I think about crazy things long beforehand. If the killer were to no longer think of Ungard as his client, then he would let Maya go. Mia, that's even more impossible! He's a man who values his duty towards his clients above all else! I know both of these seem like impossible feats at first. But if you could make either one happen, it would make for truly to be a miracle. One thing I want to do is have the killer resign the contract because I want to prove to him that his dude betrayed him. The bigger problem is the judge already said he doesn't need any more evidence. The pieces he was just shown, he's not accepting them. Phoenix, think things through from the other side. Isn't that what he always, uh, what's always worked for us? other side? Wait, does she mean... You mean to turn things around? Phoenix, the judge says he doesn't need the evidence. If that's the case, then who does need it? The person who needs the evidence. The defense, is, the defense, prosecution, the judge. We have all seen the pieces of evidence, and that is how we've come to know the truth. But there's one person who has yet to see them all, and that person does not know the truth. That truth it may be what will bring about the miracle we need. There are no objections at this time, correct? Now then I will pronounce my verdict. Why don't we all respectfully sit back and listen? I have already told you, Mr. Wright. This court does not need any more evidence. I'm not saying it, uh, it, uh, uh, it is us that needs the evidence, Your Honor. Then, you want to show the evidence to that person. And who would it be? Hmm. Please, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, for you to ask with such passion, I will grant you one chance. One chance. Please show your evidence to who you think is the right person. Secret ending. Choose Maya Fey, and the trial can't continue until she's saved. Bing, bing, bada, boom, bing. That would be a weird way of doing it. But let's see. These three pieces of evidence. I think it's the tape. 
I think the tape is important. Honestly, if it turns out that Mia is really Maya's mother, and Misty is really an adopted mother. I doubt that. <laughs> Present the diddly do to the diddly d. Hmm. Because this tape is probably the tape that was absconded with, like, that was being recorded, so it should have the killer's face on it. So if we show that to the killer, the killer will be like, "Oh, he's going to betray me. I'll kill him." Please show your evidence to who you think is the right person. And that's impossible. I turn this situation around in one try. One try. That is all I will permit. I have to try to remember everything that has happened up until this point. Think, Phoenix. Think. There must be a way to save Maya while taking on guard down at the same time. Now then, Mr. Wright, let's not waste any more time. Who would you like to show the evidence to? I would like to show it to Shelly to kill her. I see. And now tell this court what one piece of evidence you would like to show this person. It has to be one of these three. I believe it is the videotape. <laughs> Secret any present the attorney's badge to Phoenix. He stabs his arm with the pen and the trial can't continue until medical officers arrive. Doubtful. At that point, the judge would just go like, beep bidi beep bidi bee I'm gonna save videotape. Well, what do you think, Mr. Edgeworth? Uh, um, I think there is some merit in showing this evidence to that witness. Bailiff, please bring in the transceiver from earlier. All right. Looks like I managed to convince him. Maya, she's okay, right? Didn't I tell you to concern yourself with bringing about a speedy end to this trial? Now, if I understand correctly, you wish to show me one piece of evidence. Yes, one is all I need. I have here a videotape. It was found at your hideout. I heard you injured three officers in your attempt to get this back. That was most regrettable. However, it was an order from my client. I was told to protect that videotape. I thought so. I'm afraid it seems I failed in that regard. Congratulations, you have chosen wisely. Ha ha! Do you know the contents of this tape? I was sternly told by my client to not watch it, so I have absolutely no idea. Actually, you're on this tape. Me? Yeah, that's the one thing from the very beginning I wanted to tell him. There was a video camera hidden at the crime scene. Your actions were being recorded. What? Is that true, Mr. Wright? Who? Who was it that planted the camera? Well, the only person who could have placed the camera at the scene of the crime would be your client, naturally. But that is Adrian Andrews. <laughs> you should have saved for the bad ending. Well, I do have other saves further back, I think. <laughs> He's not out of the water yet. You're not the only one who's annoyed you couldn't share it sooner. Be quiet and listen, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Your client specified a place and time for you, isn't that right? Yes. That was so they could film you. I had no idea. Mr. Wright, why would my client do such a thing? As you presumably come near the end, remember to stay hydrated. I couldn't have lived with seeing the bandit in my game. I had to watch it on YouTube. <laughs> I would like to know why. We can still see if you answer the questions incorrectly. Why did Matt on guard from the crime scene? The reason why he did that is my ticket out of this whole mess. There's only one reason why your client would secretly film the crime scene. He wanted to blackmail you. Your client once told me something very interesting. We were talking about you, and this is what they said. But I'm no weakling. I don't believe in anyone, least of all assassins. Oh, come on now, Mr. Wright. Assassins aren't above blackmail. Yes, that's where the video comes in. With that, I can keep him at bay and even blackmail him if I want. Your client didn't trust you at all. They were thinking of using this video to blackmail you. He just wanted to sit on his big fluffy couch with popcorn and watch Juan die. <laughs> What do you have to say to that, Shelly to kill her? Uh, uh, ah! 
I think that's what he says if you choose the first option. It looks like... It looks like I was being deceived from the very beginning. Yes, by a natural. That is the kind of person they are. Your client is a person who only thinks and plots of how to use the people around them to protect themselves from any and all dangers that may arise. That is the true nature of your client. I have one question for the witness. Yes? You told us the one thing numerous times during your testimony. You said that you detest traitors most of all. Yes, that's right. But what if that traitor was your own client? What would you do then? That's obvious. I would break our contract in that case. And then... That client would become my next target. For the honor of the Tequila name, even if it takes an eternity, I would follow that person to the ends of the earth to exact my punishment. <laughs> I love that your uh, Tequila voice is basically Edgeworth but unhinged. I never actually meant that. <laughs> My C. That's all I wanted to know. So the traitor becomes the killer's next target. Ah, I get it. This is how we'll turn this case around. Mr. Wright. Yes? My contract with my client is over as of now. I seem to have a new job on my hands. I will now return to you your precious item. What the? I'm not an item! Maya, if I'd never see you again. Oh, thank goodness. Voice acting is hard, an eternity of attorneys. That's a tongue twister if, you ever, if there ever was one. Um, this trial appears to have come to its conclusion. However, I... Actually, I'm sort of... I don't quite know... Ah! But Miss Von Karma, where did that... <laughs> did he whip him? She always has you in her sights. Now, I do believe it's time to finally hand down a verdict. Oh, yeah! Mr. On Guard, it looks like you somehow you got what you wanted. You'll finally receive the acquittal you wanted so badly you should be happy. But before that, I would like to make one final statement. Sometime in the near future, one very betrayed assassin may appear before you. Needless to say, that man is very good at what he does. I'm sure you would understand what I mean if you watch this video. <laughs> Help me. Now then, Your Honor, the verdict, if you please. Is this all right with you, Mr. Wright? We have finally reached the end of a long battle. Whether he's convicted or acquitted, there's no escape for him now. Go on, Phoenix. Plead whichever way your heart tells you. The judge is probably thinking, can I just spar these weirdos? Nah, he's too his own thing. Right, Chief. Hmm. So, this probably doesn't matter, but I guess I could, like, plead guilty so that he can sit in jail for all eternity. And so ends what everyone considers the second best case in the series. I'll say plead guilty. Matt on guard. Even though I'm a lawyer, I cannot make your crime disappear. I mean, if you want Matt on guard to die, you can say not guilty, but Adrian may still may be arrested. Yeah, that's one- oh, that's another thing I didn't consider. <laughs> I think a guilty verdict is appropriate here. M me My wonderful self? G guilty Even if you got an acquittal the instant you set foot outside the detention center, your life would be in danger. No matter which way you look at it. You can't run away from your crime anymore. No Guilty God <laughs> And plus that means he gets to suffer. As always, it looks like we have uncovered the real truth. We? I don't remember you helping out much in this. Mr. Edgeworth, how is Matt on guard? I have left Miss Von Karma in charge of his incarceration. I'm sure he's getting a full course meal of whip leather right about now. Very good. That was a close one, wasn't it, witness? Yes. I plan to pay my debt to society for my own crime, Your Honor. The first time I was called to the witness stand during this trial... All I felt was despair. She must be talking about the time Edgeworth really went after her. 
Matt saves his own life by uh, tearing open his face. Another thing I never thought I'd say before playing AA. If I just keep myself in this, like, hospital forever, he'll never get me. I guess she's trying to forgive him for what he did. This witness? How should I put this? She has an illness. If you're going to say you would choose death, that is of no concern to me. But after that, when I was alone at the detention center, that's the first time I really saw myself for who I am. And today, when the two of you used your combined strength to convict Matt, I, I felt like I'd finally been saved. Wow, this is the first time I've ever seen her smile. I'm really happy that you two were in charge of this case. Even though we had to, like, emotionally batter you through a lot of this. I really don't know how to express how I feel at this moment. This is... This is the first time I've felt comfortable with myself. With who I am. Thank you so much, everyone. All it took was stabbing a guy's body. It looks like we have resolved everything at last. As for myself, there are still a few things I'm confused about. But everyone seems to be in good spirits. And that is good enough for me. That is all. This court is adjourned. Do we finally get to see Maya again? You were great out there, Phoenix. What I did out there was right, wasn't it? This is the first time you've not gotten your client off. You got them a guilty verdict this time. But you have to look past all that, to what's really important. You now realize that there is something more than just getting a not guilty, right? Yes, I understand now. And it also is very nice that it also mirrors Edgeworth's character arc in the first game. Where in the first game, it went from Edgeworth wanted a guilty no matter what, to he wanted the truth. And now this is much the same. And just like that, Neon Icy beats the, uh, the case on which I got 50 plus games overs. <laughs> I, I can definitely see that. There's a lot of twists and turns in this one. And luckily, all of the twists and turns aren't, like, like except for Maiden. No, I don't think uh, any of the twists and turns are that stupid compared to, like, the, uh... Well, even then, most of the twists and turns in this game have been good. It's just, like, the, the pressing and presenting evidence aspect was good in this case. And not as wonky as the big top. Yes, I understand now. Phoenix, think back for a second. Think to the moments before Miss Von Karma arrived in, with the final pieces of evidence. Think about the incredible decision you had to make. Now then, Mr. Wright, let's hear the defense's final statements on this matter. I can't count on the evidence to help me anymore. I have to listen to my heart. Should I side with justice? Or should I save Maya's life? My client, man on guard is. And thankfully, in the next game, when we see Adrian again, she looks like she's in a much better place mentally wise. So it really is a happy ending for her. <laughs> she just had to go to jail for a bit. Is he guilty or is he not guilty? Those were your choices then. And your answer? Your answer spoke to what being a lawyer means to you. And if they don't reveal it, it basically means that <laughs> literally what it means to be a lawyer to the player. Right! Edgeworth. I have good news. Maya is now safe in police custody. Really? The pearls. You're telling us the truth, right, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes. She's quite safe. She's on her way here as we speak in a patrol car. <laughs> Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya's safe! Yeah, some people say this one is better than Turnabout Goodbyes, but I struggle to follow everything. Maybe it was too lazy, lol. I just uh, gotten back from camping trip and decided to one-shot it and got the game over about 50 times on Lotta's photo. Now to see the bad ending. Maybe. So it's not my absolute favorite case for, for this reason. Still better than Big Top. Definitely better than Big Top, and I would say Turnabout Goodbyes is still better as a over, like, overarching flow. This was more intense, but I think the other one has, like, just a good feel to it. You did it! You really did it, Mr. Nick! Ow, she punches deceptively hard for a kid. I... I believed in you. I kept saying to myself, Mr. Nick will save her. Mr. Nick will save her. <laughs> uh, um, thanks. Oh. What's wrong? Miss Von Karma. Um, about earlier. Uh, 
thanks. Ow! Why are you still smiling, Mr. Phoenix Wright? You... you lost! Your perfect win record has now been crushed. Yeah, this entire time we have been winning. And yet you are still happy? I don't think you'll ever understand, Miss Von Karma. How dare you! Don't worry. She may in time. After all, I was like that myself until a year ago. Uh, Edgeworth. For my own personal victories and for guilty verdicts. I used every dirty trick in the book. And so my win record remained spotless. But... A man appeared and stood fast against that selfish me. He had a good pacing, I'll say that. Yeah. I fought him in my usual manner and tasted my first defeat. I felt like I had lost everything because of that. And then... It was my turn to sit in the defendant's chair. And I was saved by that person I called my enemy. I couldn't forgive myself for all that had happened, so I left the prosecutor's office. And I left that note. Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth chooses death. Hmm. As well as you should have. A prosecutor has shamed himself of defeat, should crawl into a hole and die. But that was not what happened. After I left the prosecutor's office, I finally came to realize something. And it was in that mo moment of clarity that everything began to change. What, what foolish nonsense. We prosecutors use anything we can to attack the defendant. But every time we did so, no matter how desperate the situation, instead of giving up like most people, that man would hold strong with his undying faith. And then, before I knew it, I began to trust in that man as well. What? You trusted your enemy? It doesn't matter how many underhanded tricks a person uses. The truth will always find a way to make itself known. The only thing we can do is to fight with the knowledge we hold and everything we have. Erasing the paradoxes one by one. It's never easy. We claw and scratch for every inch. But we will always eventually reach that one single truth. This I promise you. In Ace Attorney Investigations, when Edgeworth is finally managing to have courage to get on an elevator again, he finds a dead body. <laughs> that sounds hilarious and terrible at the same time. My favorites in the trilogy are Rise from the Ashes, Turnabout Beginnings, and Turnabout Goodbyes. Probably in that order, but not quite sure. I think Turnabout or uh, Rise from the Ashes will always be a good case to me, but will always be below pretty much any other case that is like of the same kind of spectacle, purely because of its issues. But like, it's over. It's Rise from the Ashes is above Big Top, but definitely below uh, Turnabout Goodbyes and uh, uh, Farewell, My Turnabout. <laughs> The truth? Yes, that's the reason why prosecutors and defense attorneys exist. But I'm sure you knew that already, didn't you, Wright? And that's why you couldn't forgive me. This man who went into hiding, isn't that right? This man who only had his sights set on victory, who ran away into the night. Ah, uh, is, is Mr. Edgeworth right, Mr. Nick? You really let me down. When you disappeared, I felt betrayed. The reason I decided to become a lawyer to begin with was because I believed in the things you said to me. All those years ago. And you, you betrayed your own words. That's why, one year ago, I made up my mind. I decided that the Miles Edgeworth I knew had died. At least... That's what I told myself. You pathetic fool! But Miss Von Kerma, I don't want to hear the wretched whimpering of a disgraced loser. A Von Karma is someone who is destined to be perfect. Miles Edgeworth, you are no longer worthy. You are no longer worthy of being a Von Karma. And neither am I. It's over. It's all over. 
Franziska threw something on the ground just now. This is an electromagnetic receiver. Isn't that thing that she used to track Detective Gumshoe? I'll return this to the precinct later. There's something else. Ah, oh, isn't that Miss Von Karma's whip? I'll never set foot in another courtroom again. I'm sure that's what she's saying by this action. You should keep this, right? Um, okay. Nick! Totally the wrong voice for that. B -b -b Maya! Mystic Maya! <laughs> Mystic Maya! Oh, that's adorable. Maybe we can have an entire stream watching the Phoenix Wright stage plays. There are five of them in this case, and the only uh, one, uh, only one they do that isn't original. Eh, probably not. I mean, mostly because I don't really think I'd be good for reaction content. But who knows? Maybe in the future. It'll. It's. Uh, it's an idea to set there, but it's like. Uh, don't know. Then again, maybe it's different because it's a stage play. Maybe I just read them all out. Eh, who knows? Oh, Nick, I knew you'd come through. You got on guard convicted like I knew you would. And on top of that, you even rescued me. Well, of course I did. You know, I would never desert you. But we sure pressed our luck this trial. You're really lucky to be standing here. Yeah, I wasn't popular in liking the security video, not having too much trouble rotating the vase, and I like the link because it feels earned. Yeah, the rotating the vase was definitely awkward. I think the security video I did good on except for one aspect of it. I forget which. I think it had to do with the glove. But I did like the length because it did feel earned. Even though in the moment sometimes I'm just like, oh my god, it's so long. <laughs> whatever, whatever. Look, it's over, okay? Besides, if I did croak, I would just come back and haunt you like a bad ghost through Pearly. Ah! She's got a point. Is it really that easy to do something like that? Thanks a lot, Nick. Um, don't mention it. Maya. Oh, Mr. Edgeworth. Um, I'm relieved you're all right. All of them are not only on YouTube, but you have to turn on subtitles on because those plays are entirely in Japanese. Ha! Ah. Hey, it looks like you've made some real progress, Mr. Edgeworth. Um... Well, I suppose I'm a little different from who I was a year ago. <laughs> because you're hungry! Alright! I think it's time we got out of this depressing place! Huh? Where are we going? Food, Nick! Food! Grub chow, I'm starved! I'm so hungry, even you look like a nice juicy burger on a bun to me, Nick. You think I look like a burger? I'm a prime rib, at least! Come with us, Mr. Edgeworth, please! Uh, um, if you insist. Alright. So, how about we hit up our usual burger joint? <laughs> Don't be silly, Nick. Huh? This case messed up that awesome evening and got in the way of our gourmet food. So I've decided that we have to make up for it by having another feast! Another feast? Come on, Nick, food! And that is how... Phoenix Wright went bankrupt. Oh, we're just gonna go super on. Hey, pal! Sorry to keep you guys waiting. Gumshoe, are you alright? Yeah, but I'm really embarrassed. I didn't think I would hit a telephone pole of all things. A telephone pole? Well, it wasn't a red light that got him. You did it again, city boy. I felt like my dear old hat was gonna give out on me, and I ain't joking. Yeah, it was more exciting than the very last episode of The Steel Samurai. The thanks. Now look at here, Mr. Snooty Prosecutor. Don't you reckon you're bullying Mr. Wright too hard? If you don't stop being a, a lot nicer to him, he might just kick it. Tonight, even. Um, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> well, come on now. Everyone gather around. Y'all gonna get your picture taken by a genuine professional photographer. Looks like Lada bought herself a new camera. Well, pal, at least we can put this messy case behind us now. Come on! Tonight's all about eating, so let's go chow down, pal! Amen to that, pal. Amen. You know, when you think about it, you are the one who saved the day, Detective. Huh? Me? You really think so? He's right. <laughs> Makes sense because the killer di uh, didn't feed her once. Yep. 
Uh, when you come out on victory, remember to stay hydrated. If it wasn't for the three items you took, I think this trial would have had a very different ending. Ah, oh, well, you know, it's... <laughs> huh? Wait, that's odd. When I ran off with the things from the killer's hideout, I was sure I took four things in total, sir. What? Four? Yeah, I'm sure I put one of the items in my coat pocket. There was a fourth item? Ah, uh, come on, y'all, it's over. But who, oh boy, I tell you, you really are something else. Between getting accused of murder and getting kidnapped, never a dull moment with you, huh? <laughs> you think? Why does she look so happy about that? But being shut away for two whole days, weren't you scared? Yeah, it was really scary. I felt so hopeless. And so to keep my mind off of things, I drew a picture. Sounds like you had it rough, gal. So where's this picture of yours? Yeah, I want to see it. I want to see Mr. Maya's picture. Hmm, you know, I don't know where it went. Aw, that's too bad. Well, it's all right. It wasn't anything important anyway. Ah, uh, it sure is nice to finally see them both smiling again. Beepity beepity. Hmm, what is it? <laughs> what is it, Edgeworth? Edgeworth said to himself. What is it, Edgeworth? This thing is picking up something, picking something up. Oh, that's, that's Miss Von Gama's receiver. Oh, uh, thanks to her, I had the most awful experience of my life, sir. I can't believe she stuck a tracking device on me. And that's odd. Even though you're standing right here, the tracking device seems to be in a different location. The bad ending is that Wendy Oldbag doesn't get the death penalty for stealing valuables. <laughs> oh, it's probably busted or something, sir. Well, it doesn't matter. I'm afraid it's about time for me to excuse myself. I still have some work to do. Huh? But Mr. Edgeworth, you still haven't eaten anything yet. And you've eaten way too much, you glutton. I had fun tonight. Now, if you'll excuse me. Wait. What? I just want to say thanks, Edgeworth. You really saved me out there. <laughs> if anyone should be saying thanks, it should be me, right? I feel like words alone aren't enough here. I wonder if there's anything I can give to express how I feel. Do I have anything? To <laughs> what would I even give him that would make sense? I give you a gun! <laughs> that would be hilarious, wouldn't it? I point a gun at you. <laughs> Wine glass. No. Hmm. It has a certain mysterious nostalgia to it. I remember being whipped by this whip. I feel it has to be the whip because why else would the whip be added to the inventory? I'm going to say whip. Darn, I didn't save. Oh well. Hand over your attorney's badge. <laughs> Showing you learned nothing. What's this? Thank you. It's all thanks to you two. You and her. You don't need to thank me. I was only doing my job. It looks like Mr. Edgeworth has left, Mr. Nick. Hey, Mr. Kamaya? Hmm? Yes, Pearly? I guess you two can go back to being lovey-dovey, right? You and Mr. Nick, I mean. P Pearly, would you cut it out already? You're embarrassing me. Um, anyway, so who's paying for this lovely dinner party? As if you need to ask, everyone say thank you to Nick. Huh? Uh, yeah, I'm kind of at the point where I can't even buy instant noodles, pal. So I kind of already put your name on the bill. Huh? Huh? Yeah, I got me a situation just like that myself. There's this camera shop in this hotel, you see, and I just bought myself this good old beauty here. It'd be better anyhow for 3000 <laughs> Actually, I reckon you bought it for me since it's on your tab and all. <laughs> Isn't this great, Mr. Nick? Yeah, Nick. Why do I suddenly feel like screaming? Ah, uh, you don't need to hold back now, you hear? Yeah, pal. Time to let it all out. This is going to be the first time I hear the real you. <laughs> They're just basically bullying him. Go on, it's been a while since I've heard you say it. I've been busy being a hostage after all. Say what? All right then, if you say so. Objection! <laughs> I refuse! 
And I wonder if we're going to get another, like, cut-ins of the various witnesses. Oh, there are. You really came through for me, Nick. I had to hide that letter, but I knew you'd find it. I really feel like I've been living on the edge lately. I mean, I've escaped death three times now. Pretty cool, huh? I feel like a pro. But yeah, honestly... <laughs> don't miss the epilogue, yeah, because the epilogue's important. But yeah, this game is really, really good. Really, really good. I'm so happy that you could save Mystic Maya, Mr. Nick. And I'm so happy for the two of you. Speaking of which, I think this hotel is a popular place for Hun. <laughs> She's just such a shipper. So I sort of made reservations for the two of you, just in case. How did you do that? You don't even know how to utilize technology. How can you just be like, yes, me, an eight-year-old would like to book a honeymoon suite? Madness. Well, pal, it looks like I'm back on the force again. Mr. Edgeworth had a long talk with the chief, and he got me reinstated for my sake. I only said things like, letting that one go is bad for all of society. I knew it! Crashing headlong into everything is the only way to live, pal! Well, at least he gets his job. So he's not gonna die. Yeah, because I don't think that there's a singular, like, bad case to this game, which is very good. Hey, it's you again! I, Maggie Beard, am retiring this uniform as of today, sir. I'm going to be a waitress from now on. And bring smiles and joy to the people who come by the restaurant, sir. You're gonna have that restaurant dead in a day. I hope you'll stop by sometime, Mr. Wright. Your curse will destroy everything. Yeah, this game was pretty good. I just didn't like it because I died on literally the last contra first contradiction. Trials and Tribulations is my favorite trilogy game in the trilogy. Maybe overall. Hmm, yes. Are you here to visit a patient? Hmm, I'm Director Hearty. <laughs> Recently, um, yes, uh, that girl, you know, I haven't seen her around, <laughs> yes, but I remember if then if I didn't lay as much as an eye on her, I'd just go crack, <laughs> it didn't matter if I got whipped, though, <laughs> yes, so. You're such an interesting character that I did not expect to return. I can only guess he's going to return more because they're like, haha, weirdness. It's time to begin our quest of World Circus Domination, sweetie! And to let the world know, we are serious, I plan to make a fabulous flight to Zimbabwe! Hey, Max, what do you think Zimbabwe is like? Do you think there are castles made of cake and bunnies who can talk? I think if there are any talking bunnies, even they won't laugh at Moe's jokes. <laughs> and I dislike the first case because, aside from Gumshoe making uh, her more interesting, Maggie feels like a cheap renter defendant. I think that's kind of the point. It's meant to be a simpler case to open up with. I'm ready! I'm ready! There's no way these jokes are gonna fall on deaf ears! I'm gonna be more contemporary of my humor! Mo curls represent! We got a new act all worked out! Prepare for Hallelujah Chorus! Say something, will ya? You're supposed to start this off! Get on with it! Those two are still weird. I liked Maggie enough. The... Really, the thing that bugged me the most about the tutorial case is, like, the amnesia, but even then. Only just slightly. What's this, Drat? It's just an ordinary electric razor recharging station. I can't believe this. Really? How long do they plan on making me do this? Ah, uh, but it's Edgy Pooh's idea. So that means it must have a deep hidden meaning. But why do I get the feeling they wouldn't forget about me, would they? Ah, it was never like this in the old days. Everyone thought the world of me. They called me Queen Windy and treat me like a teeny person who about with the same feel pain of the hills. They're gonna build a burn and speaking of bird plane fires very dangerous because the three of words you saw these scenery burns and such stink. Ugh, she just keeps on going. But yeah, the tutorial case was very interesting. I think it was just like I didn't expect it to be that long. But I didn't mind Maggie. It was a nice case overall. I appreciate everything you, Mr. Edgeworth, did for me from the bottom of my heart. Oh, that's right. I received a letter from Miss Von Karma. She said that after I get out, I should feel free to consult her about anything at all. I'm really thankful to have met everyone. I'm glad that I didn't get you killed! Oh, this is such a nice game. Oh, <laughs> and to kill her! It has become difficult for me in this country as of late. As such, I will take a short leave of absence. If you would like to request my services, please be sure to visit my homepage. <laughs> he has a homepage? <laughs> and then it finally self-destructed. 
He has a home page? What? <laughs> Crazy, if true. March 23rd, 9.42 p.m. International Departures, Gate 12. Ah. This is just like the diddledy. Where are you going, Franziska? But, yeah, this reminds me of, like, the ending to the first game where they, like, made the whole, like, uh, tr <laughs> the trainway in which Maya was going two hours away. How did you know I was here? With this... That's... I heard you were planting things on a certain person. Things like tracking devices in his coat, for example. <laughs> That's just like you. I only planted it there because he was always wearing it. This filthy drab coat of his. I don't know how it ended up in my luggage. But it's going in the trash, I promise you that. Oh, that's right. Speaking of that man, he told me something very interesting. When I ran off with the things from the killer's hideout, I was sure I took four things in total, sir. Four things? It seems he put the last one in his po coat pocket. He put it in here? It doesn't matter anymore. The case is already over. What are you going to do now? That's none of your business. Are you running away? Shut up! You don't understand a thing. You can't possibly understand what it means to be Manfred von Karma's daughter. Franziska. So many expectations from everyone around me. Expectations I must fulfill. I'm expected to win no matter what, and failure? Such a thing is not an option for me. My father was a genius. There's no doubt about that, but... But me, I'm no genius. I've always known that. But I... I had to be one. I had to. You may not be a genius like your father, but you are a prosecutor. You have been and always will be. No, I'm not. Not anymore. I've even thrown my whip away. Speaking of that, Wright gave me this to hold on to. Wright, you knew something like this would happen, didn't you? I'm going to say this again. The prosecutors do not fight for personal honor or pride. I hope you'll think deeply about what you should be striking down with that whip. You haven't changed a bit. You've always... You've always left me alone and walked on ahead without me, Miles Edgeworth. I've always hated you. And then, finally, my chance to take my revenge on you arrived. If I could win against that man, if I could make Phoenix Wright bow down in defeat, then this girl you left behind would have risen higher than you. That was supposed to be my revenge. My see. You know, I can't do it. I can't change who I am. I can't throw away everything I've been up to until today. You, I believe you can. Just like how Adrian Andrews did. Adrian Andrews? You are going to use her during the trial, right? But you... You were dependent on your father by using his tactics. Isn't that right? Hmm. <laughs> Today, you chased after me after I had left you behind all these years. And that's why we're standing here now, side by side. But I have no intention of stopping. If you say you're going to quit your walk... Uh, going to quit your walk down the prosecutor's path... Then, this is where we part ways, Franziska von Karma. Oh, it's adorable. I... I... I am Franziska von Karma. Don't think I'm going to walk in your shadow forever. Our battle begins now. So you'd better prepare yourself, Miles Edgeworth. That is adorable. In the first game, the turnabout you're saying goodbye to is Maya, who saved the bullet. In the second... Oh. 
I thought it was done. Phoenix Wright, one day, someday, I'm sure we'll meet again in battle. Until then, this last piece of evidence that never made it to you, I'll take good care of this fourth piece. So I can give it to you when at last we meet again. I stole this piece of evidence from a person who stole the evidence so I might give it to you. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Oh, that's great. It's the picture that she that Maya drew. Oh, that's wonderful. Farewell, my turnabout. But yeah, and in the first game, the turnabout you're saying goodbye to is Maya, who saved the bullet. In the second, the turnabout you're saying farewell to is Franziska. At least that's why, uh, I think that's why they're called. Or am I overthinking? That could be what they're, they are. Turnabout goodbye, because, yeah, you're saying goodbye to Maya, farewell, because Franziska. They could have other meanings as well, but that was really fun. It's hard to say, but, hmm. Yeah, that that's very good. If I had to stack the games against each other, like, even if we excised uh, Rise from the Ashes and just, like, uh, treated them just on the basic four case games that they originally were, I think I would still go with the original Ace Attorney game just a bit. I think mostly because of an odd nostalgia, like the soundtrack is good, it's the first game, it feels like both simple and complex at the same time, and just like that, Neon Icy continues to surpass any Ace Attorney fan's expectations. At l I, ho I, I hope to exceed. It's hard, but I like the first game better by a bit. It just has a feel to it, an atmosphere. It helps that, like, uh, it's the introductory game, so it doesn't have any baggage to it. And it, there's so many iconic things that come from the first game. Because it focuses more on the overarching story. That too. With this one, there honestly doesn't feel like there's that much of an overarching story too much. It's mentions of uh, Edgeworth, Franziska comes in. But really, she doesn't have too, too much to contribute to the overarching story until the end. But she does play a important role in the final case like hmm. it's really hard to judge these two because the first one is such a classic so many classic things classic music classic events and memes but this one also has good things about it it has little animations it, it continues the characters and uh, has interesting cases and i think like uh yeah all the cases are good and really, it's only just minor wonkiness or just pure difficulty that made them be what they are in the second game, Justice for All. The second case is the best case in the trilogy here. Maybe. It definitely is thought-provoking. It's definitely interesting. There's enough information that allows you to theorize. That's one thing that I think I failed when it comes to uh, the big uh, uh, the turnabout big top. Uh, best second case. Ah, yes. The best case that is the second case within a game. Yeah, that makes sense. Definitely blows the first game second case out of the water. I'm sorry, first game. But it definitely feels like Mr. Red White should have been bigger. Should have been a bigger threat. Somehow, like, I don't know. While Mia needed to die and Red White basically needed to be the one to do it. And Maya needed to go on trial. It just feels like... The second case of the first game should have been a bigger thing. Like, it should have had more grandiosity to it. But at the same time, like, it's hard to say. I think the, the second game, Justice for All, is better put together overall. It has less bumps in it. And it has more, like... It has its own more intense atmosphere. It has more intrigue to it. Whereas the first game feels more familiar, feels more homey and comfy, and classic and nostalgic. They both, like, it's very hard. I'd probably say the first game is, uh, like, the second game is probably better, but the first game is so far my favorite. 
Shu Takumi's OG plan was to have Mia's death be the first uh, final case, Edgeworth's redemption be the second, and guilty uh, and a guilty client be the third. So yeah, sisters could have been better in that way. Huh, that's actually very interesting that... <laughs> that they kind of shifted things around. Hmm. But that makes me wonder... I guess, hmm. That makes me wonder what the overarching story of the first game would have been. It probably would have focused more on, like, setting up the second game with, like, the incident diddly D, and then have the end be Mia's death, but then that would kind of, uh... I guess it could have made it work. I wonder if somebody's tried to make, like, a fan fiction of, like, how events would have gone if that original plan went through. Makes me wonder what the third final case will be. But that's very interesting that they excised it. But I wonder what the... Since they excised the original first final case, moved the second final case to the first game and the third final case to the second game. I wonder what the third final case will be. Hmm, it'll be interesting to see. So this is your second favorite case after goodbyes? Probably. Rise from the Ashes is up there, purely on grandiosity, but its issues hold it back. So if I had to label a top three, it would probably be Turnab uh, uh, Turnabout Goodbyes, Farewell My Turnabout, and then... Uh, in third place, Rise from the Ashes. Again, it's mostly the atmosphere and feel of Turnabout Goodbyes that just feels so good. But this one, this one has its own in... I think that's it. Rise from the Ashes and Turnabout Goodbyes have grandiosity to them. They feel big. Fair, ter, farewell, my Turnabout is intense. That's just it. It is intense, and it feels like it is going through to your for your throat. Because you have to be careful, you have to think things through, you're worrying about every which thing. And, like, everything is just wonky and out to get you. Hmm. But, I don't know what I... Who knows, maybe at the end of the trilogy I should make a full ranking of Ace Attorney cases. And good stream, too. And have a good night. Thank you, indeed. I guess I'll quickly go through each of the second game's cases first and, like, give my overall thoughts on them. My overall thoughts on the game, and then I'll end. The tutorial case is definitely better than the first game's tutorial case because it feels like an actual case. And it just, uh, like, the... It is a little wonky and weird. It has a plot hole in it that you don't really notice the plot hole while you're playing it. The fact that technically Maggie should have been there to see her boyfriend get killed and thus would have seen the guy who killed her boyfriend thus being able to, like, say something. But that's never brought up in the case. They ne like They never really say anything about her being there when her boyfriend is pushed. So it's a little odd. It's a little weird. But overall, it is a good case, and the only wonky thing is the Amnesia subplot, but it does add some epic moments. The second case is a grand case, probably my... F Honestly, it's probably better than, like, Rise from the Ashes. The second case in this game is just so good. It has so much to it, a mystery, it has, like, so much you can think about, interesting characters... It fleshes out characters a bit more, introduces new characters, brings back characters. It's a really good second case. The uh, second case is the best one at being good, but low-key so. Yeah. It, do it, it doesn't feel grandiose, but it, it feels like a real mystery that you're trying to figure out. Because you know Maya couldn't have done it. And the only thing bad about that case is that I believe, in my opinion... There should have been a second piece of evidence that at least shows the player what like, a, uh, the blast burn from a gun would look like, so they'd be able to go like, hey, the the robe doesn't have blast burn on it, because elsewise they just verbally describe what blast burn is. And they don't, like, show a up-close and personal look of the, the deceased's head, so you, you don't get a good idea of it. But overall, the second case is really damn good. The third case, be, uh... 
Turnabout Big Top. In my opinion, it is lesser than Steel Samurai. Steel Samurai just feels so good. It is a very good case in my opinion. I still really like Turnabout Big Top. It feels a bit wonky here or there. It has interesting characters, but at the same time, there's, it's a, there's a little bit of pacing issues at times, like where do you need to go to activate certain things. It feels like uh, Trilo and Ben drop out of the case with no fanfare. Their case is entertaining for what is filler. That is what it is. I call them breather cases because, especially in the first game, it's a breather case between, like, all of the really more intense personal cases where things get, like, intense or personal. Like, in the first game, it goes from Mia is dead, her sister's on trial, then you're on trial, to you're helping out a movie star, to your childhood friend who is your enemy is now on trial and thinks that he did it. They are breather chapters that are meant to help the player along in understanding how longer cases go, while at the same time giving you a breath of fresh air of a different kind of atmosphere. Like, the first game, it goes to a movie studio and has interesting things that go through that. The second one, it goes to a circus and has interesting things that goes with that. And I really like that. And the only thing that I think is personally a failing on my part is I had no idea who did it up until the very end. I was still in conspiracy brain mode because I was basically riding the high of calling the twist of what happened in the second case that my brain was going everywhere on the twists. It's like, ah, Acro's brother is actually woken up and he wants revenge or something like that. And like, the, the I got through the third case by just abusing the game mechanics and being like, I feel like this makes sense game-wise, and did not put together that Acro did it himself, by himself, entirely, until basically the end. <laughs> but, and then, of course, the fourth case is a really good case. It is really good, probably my second favorite case overall, because there was nothing in there that felt, like, wrong. There was no bump that was, like, it felt disjointed at times, but in an intentional way because you're trying to beat the clock. You're like, we have to finish this in one day, and then you have to, like, negotiate with the assassin to get a second day. And that's actually an interesting thing where you, like, it, it was kind of a, it not helped by the DS version of this first game, kind of a trope of, ha ha ha, late game Ace Attorney goes all three days, whereas this one you are actively fighting to not go to that third day. And again... It has the interesting dynamic of you, like, knowing that you're, like, I guess su supposedly you have to think about it and go, hmm, is my, like, client guilty? Because, again, from the very beginning, he only accepts you as a lawyer after De you drop the killer's name. Fourth case was good. My only gripe from this game overall was Pearl giving you infinite backseating. But I get it uh, that it shows Phoenix struggling and needing help. Yeah. Because it also means that, like, Phoenix is under the most stress he has ever been in. Because it's one thing to be like, oh, I'm in a, a courtroom and I need to find myself innocent or else I'm going to die. Or I need to find this person innocent within the bounds of the court. It's the fact that immediately he is working against the clock to save Maya... And, like, that right from the start, it shows that he's, like, on super stress. Because he wants to believe his client is innocent, while at the same time is constantly worrying about Maya. And then once it's revealed that your client is actually guilty and very evil, it then becomes a double whammy of, I have to, like, I have to push the trial forward. Or, I have to, like... I have to push the trial forward. I can't let the assassin know that I'm stalling. It's just like, it's a very stressful time for the boy. Poor man. And again, probably my second favorite because it does feel grandiose. And But the one thing that I feel is integral to this fourth case is that it is intense. 
everything about it just feels very intense. Also, there's an infamous typo where if you get the bad ending on the original American DS release, Phoenix laments, the miracle never happened. The miracle never happened. Oh, oh. That, that is kind of funny. Kind of hilarious and bad in its own way. But, yes, and I guess overall, I really like the characters being brought back. Like Lada, Old Bag. It's very nice to see them again. <laughs> it's just extra interesting that... Oh, yeah, and Powers. Kind of odd that both Wendy and Powers showed up in the same case, but eh, what you gonna do? They're both good characters. Although, it is kind of odd that Wendy didn't really get off. Like, well, no, she did get off. She stole a camera and, like, wasn't held accountable. Not kind of, entirely. Anyway, I love hearing your thoughts. Good night, and I look forward to Game 3, whose intro case has a pleasant twist. Very nice. And hope you have a nice night as well. But I guess I should stop rambling. This second game, very good. A very worthy successor to the first Ace Attorney game. But I guess that shall be it. Anyways, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Uh, if you want more from me, I have two YouTube channels. An edited content YouTube channel, I swear. Content is coming someday. Maybe I'll make a, a casual video there after I beat the third game, ranking all of the original Ace Attorney trilogy cases from... Uh, least favorite to most favorite. You yeah, know, classic countdown style. And uh, then I also have my streaming YouTube channel, Neon Icy Games, that I stream to, as well as post all these streams to afterwards as a, like, archive, so people can look back on the various games I've played, like Kirby and the Forgotten, uh, For Kirby and the Forgotten Land, Undertale, the Mass Effect trilogy, just lots of games. And then, if you prefer to watch on Twitch, I have a Twitch channel, Neon Icy Wings, over there, twitch.tv slash Neon Icy Wings. And elsewise, if you want art from me, like my little character in the corner and my end screen drawings, you can see me post said art to various art sites like DeviantArt, Inkblot, Newgrounds, Tumblr, Twitter, all of them. And those links and many more can be found in my link tree, which can be found in descriptions bios, link places, anywhere that a link typically would want to be. So you can follow that to the various art sites, my Patreon, I guess, if you want to help me survive the world of damnation, my writing, many things. And that should be linktr.ee slash neonizywings. Eh. But yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody. I will take a small break from Ace Attorney, presumably, try to beat my Pokemon Blue Rescue Team post-game stuff, and then see about taking a break to a new game all entirely from there. But that'll be next time. Probably more than next time. Later on past that. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Hope to see you dudes next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.